bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Yes, uh, I believe that we want to add an item for going over the uh, the proposed ballot for town meeting and warning. Uh, so that would be board positions on any uh, uh, warned articles? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other additions or changes to the agenda? Um, Kyle? Yeah, Eric, I just had a few um, thoughts I wrote about um, Martin Luther King Day that I just wanted okay. to share. Is there anyone else? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else. Uh, before we get started on the meeting, I, I see there is quite a number of folks on here. If your interest tonight is in the, uh, the articles that would be put on the warning for the town meeting ballot, that's item four under Brian's uh, administration's report. We probably will not get there until at least around eight o'clock. So you're more than welcome to stick around if you want, but we're gonna be looking at some pretty dry things like the budget, but you're more than welcome to stick around. With that, uh, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of January 4th? So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion, do we have a second? I will second it. Motion is second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of signifying saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Rosemary, you've got the floor. Rosemary, there you go. Okay, I don't have a lot for tonight. Um, on the budget status reports um, to date, Revenue is at 89 and a half percent. And total spent is at 41.11 percent. Okay. And the big items on the warrant were the uh, Sheriff's Department expenditures for this month. I got one question. What were all the charges for couriers? There's like three or four. In the library, instead of mailing the books, they use a courier. Okay. Okay. So it'll be applied towards their budget? Yes. The cost? Okay. Thank yep. you. Anyone else got any questions for Rosemary? And I'm going to do a front porch forum post regarding um, animal licensing, tell them they can do it through the mail since we're still closed and probably will be through April 1st. Okay. And is that it? Yes. Just have, have you guys authorize Eric to sign the warrants. So move. Got a motion, do we have a second? Second. Second. Kyle got it. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Are there any further questions for Rosemary? Seeing none. Okay. Brian, were we going to have Hugh here tonight? Yep. He was here. Okay. Is he on? I don't see him. Uh, I've got him on the list. Oh, there he is. You, you're up. All right. <clears throat> um, I wanted to bring up our salt truck um, that we're going to be acquiring. I've been here a short time, but I've already seen why this new truck we've spec and apparently committed to ordering the chassis for. Um, and I kind of dispute 
whether or not it's the best fit for the town. Um, Can you hold sure. all of those thoughts for under Brian's report? Sure. Okay, if you want to just give us a general report on the highway and uh, and all, that would be yep. fine for this time. Yeah, let me pull that up. So we spent, uh, we did a lot of sanding this last month. Um, <clears throat> performed our normal equipment repairs, maintenance. Uh, we installed the new spreader in the pickup. We did the 3000 hour service on the loader. Uh, we've been addressing some parking issues on the roads, um, people illegally parking um, during snow events and inhibiting our ability to do our job. And uh, the guys also participated in some more of the safety trainings from the Vermont Local Roads group. What training was that with you, Falls? Yes, Falls is uh, what was the one they just did. Yep, and they're signed up for four more. Yeah, but what is it? Uh, it was just OSHA um, regulations and um, making sure the guys were operating safely to try to mitigate any fall risks. Uh, during their work day. Okay. Anything further, uh, Hugh? We'll get to the salt truck and uh, Brian's report. Sure. Nope, that's it. Anybody got any questions for Hugh? Seeing none. I don't expect any from the public as well. I'm not seeing any from the public right okay. now. Okay. Well, actually, the very first item in your report is the salt truck. Yep. So, Hugh, if you want, we can turn it right back over to you. Yeah, I'll refer to Hugh's judgment on this. <clears throat> um, so, I reviewed what we had um, spec'd and uh, agreed upon based on what Brian's recommendations were back in September. And um, I wholeheartedly feel like the vehicle that we've committed to going with is not going to best serve the needs um, of the town, especially for the next eight years or whenever the cycle is up. Um, I've researched some other uh, avenues and um, I sent those over uh, to Brian, um, but I really think it's something we need to think about seeing if we can put the brakes on and uh, go this other route that I recommended. So when I, if I recall, we had switched to a different model, same size truck, but a different model. And the uh, justification was it was a little bit heavier duty, um, Hugh, is that something you found is not the case? Well, I think that the model that they've switched us into, um, you know, they assure us that the rear end is going to be heavier duty. Um, however, the reason that we're breaking rear ends now is lack of traction. And uh, so you have a two wheel drive truck, the guys are loading it to the hilt just to hopefully achieve enough traction to make it up these hills that truck there seems it tends to every paved apron we've installed over the years you turn and you go straight up a hill that's paved because it's you know that's the best way to keep it from eroding and what happens is that truck spins and then once it regains traction it slams all that force through that rear end and ends up breaking it so um you know, Russ at Clark's has assured us that this new truck will have a better rear end. Um, however, a four wheel drive truck, a smaller four wheel drive truck, um, in my opinion, would be better for us. Um, we don't need to load it as heavy. Um, the four wheel drive truck would handle it with half the load and uh, it'd be spreading, you know, all of that torque throughout the whole, you know, front end and rear end. Um, I do some of that route with the pickup in four wheel drive and 
the truck doesn't work very hard. It's got great traction and um, and it's clearly the better route to go. Um, there's many other reasons as to why I think we should go with a smaller truck, um, but and it's not just cost. I mean, obviously cost will be a little bit lower, um, but I'm trying to look for a truck that can address issues that we run into the other eight months out of the year that we're not plowing. Um, the smaller truck that I looked at, you know, would have a dump body with drop down sides so the guys can put all their small tools in the bed of it um, and go off and do their brush cutting and whatever else that they need to do uh, during the summer months that uh, require small tools. Um, <clears throat> it just seemed to me like it would be a better fit overall than what we're going with. Let me ask you, uh, when I remember when we had some of this discussion, ordering a truck, uh, I think Brian Krause had indicated that ideally, if money was no object, we would go with a four wheel drive uh, truck similar to what we ordered. Uh, I don't remember what the cost difference was actually uh, for four wheel drive in that model or make size pick a, a dump truck any thoughts on that i believe it increases the cost at least twenty thousand. okay um but i still just don't understand why that truck needs to be that big <laughs> um from what i understand it is that big so that it can haul as much weight as possible to gain traction um i honestly think that that whole concept can just be taken a step back from. And um, the smaller truck that I'm looking at would hold four yards, which is a little bit less than what the current one can hold. Um, but it's a cheaper alternative. It's cheaper to maintain the dealers closer. Um, you know, the salt uh, shed is in the middle of the route. So even if he had to come back again to fill up, it doesn't, it's not like we're gonna, we're going way out of the way to do that. Um, so I think it's just something to consider. I guess uh, I wanna open it up the full board. Anybody got any questions, Mike? How much cheaper is it, you? I think we could save 15 grand, maybe more. It's good enough for me. Let's cancel the other one and get the cheaper truck. Well, what is that option? What's, how's Clark's feel about that? So my conversation with Clark's was just cordial. I said, you know, I'm looking into what's best for the town. I said, we're still buying a tandem from you. Um, so it's nothing against uh, anybody. I just was wondering if we could possibly cancel this chassis and you know, the conversation was friendly, but you could tell that they really didn't want to, obviously. I mean, I understand Clark's position that he was going with what the town asked for. So it's not like he was forcing us into something. You know, I'm I'm the new guy who comes in with all sorts of great ideas. And, you know, I that's <laughs> unfortunately, that's the situation. Um, I mean, I understand they don't they, they won't be excited about it, but. Um, will, they, will they allow us to do it, first of all, and how much would that damage the relationship is the second one? Would it cost us any money? I don't know the legalities of the contract we agreed to. Brian sent it to me. I read it. Very vague. Um, so, Brian, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, you're right. It, it's quite vague. It, it's, you know, a little more formal than a handshake, but not a whole lot. Um, it does not specify any remedies for if we want to cancel. Um, but, you know, we want to maintain a good relationship with Clark. So I think there's some room to negotiate with them. Uh, but it's, it may or may not, you know, be successful. They may or may not want a specific dollar amount out of us to cancel the contract. Um, but I'm thinking that since it's probably doable given that we had to order a truck so far in advance that they're so backed up with people looking for trucks that I doubt they're going to be, I doubt they're going to have any trouble finding somebody else who wants 
the truck that we had ordered and who might be happy to receive it, you know, six months to a year earlier than they had thought they were going to receive a new truck. So we haven't put any down payment money. We there's have no, not. There's no money. In, okay. But we, we did sign a purchase and sale agreement. We have agreed to purchase a truck and they have laid out some of their money to mm. lay down for the truck that we're going to purchase. Uh, we have a good relationship with them so that when we told them that the truck would be purchased in the FY22 financial year, they didn't require us to make a deposit before the financial year in which we're replacing the truck. It's just that ordering right now is backed up far enough that we had to, to get a truck next year, we had to signed the purchase and sale uh, last September. Mike? You know, we bought a lot of rigs from them over the years and we have another truck on order. Um, I don't think it's any real big deal. I can't imagine that you say they've spent money already on this, Brian? I, as I understand it, yeah, I believe that they've ordered uh, the chassis for our truck. Really? Well, anyway, you look at it, we ought to see if we can cancel this and uh, get a cheaper truck. Uh, as I said, from the outset, we've done a lot of business with them. I'm sure we will continue to do business with them. And we actually have a bigger truck on order with them. So let's move forward and get the cheaper truck. Well, specifically what we'd be looking for tonight is uh, the authorization to negotiate with Clarks about canceling our order. Well, don't be giving away the farm. You know, we've got a decent idea of how much we might save with the, the new truck. And yeah, we're not gonna be giving away a ton of money with it. But the, the first thing is gonna be canceling that order without you know, taking a bath on, on any money that they've deposited or anything that we owe them. Well, I think it's going to be possible, but uh, yeah, the board ordered that contract signed. So I don't have the authority to negotiate for that without the board's direction. Nat? Yeah, I, I'd say we're not, we're not authorizing any, any deal tonight, but we are asking to see if we can cancel it and what it would cost us. Does that sound reasonable? I would look for a motion. So directing Brian to start those discussions with uh, Clark. So move. We have a motion, do we have a second? Yes, second. A motion, second. Any more discussion? Hugh, just, uh, um, you may have written it in your letter, I forget, but there, the other, the smaller truck will definitely be available when we need it should we cancel this yeah so the my plan was we can get the new chassis by may mm -hmm. and slip it into the same build schedule as the truck we would be canceling at viking for the upfit okay doug yeah so i've heard a lot of stuff that that uh, is hopeful you know in terms of our our relationship with Clarks. I've, I've heard that there's nothing in the contract that uh, provides a specific remedy, but the law provides a specific remedy, which is that the breach of the, they're entitled to the benefit of the bargain of this, which is why you negotiate. So we're looking at, at uh, we walk away from it, they, and, and they don't give us permission to, we're looking at giving, having to pay them, likely they're probably in the contract, their attorney's fees for collecting, and their and the loss of the benefit of the bargain to them, so so that's the leverage on their side. That's it might not be. I think it's good to look at it from a whole point of view uh, in terms of legality, rather than you know yes, I can see why we would do this based on Hugh's recommendation, but uh, there is there are real teeth out there, even though they aren't as obvious. So it all depends on we're making a call that they really like us. We hope they do. Yeah, they definitely can uh, make it tough for us to 
to leave the contract. You, would the truck you're proposing be able to push the plow and the wing and do everything that our current truck does? Yep. Okay. Mike? I think that they, they'll probably, you know, Doug is talking about the worst case scenario. Uh, they want to keep business. Uh, I doubt seriously that they're going to really rake us over the coals on this. Uh, you know, there's another deal down the road. You know, the world's full of deals and you can almost make up one that you lost or straighten out one down the road. So I can't believe they're going to really give us a hard time because they're going to want us to keep doing business with them. If they give us a hard time, we'll just go somewhere else on our next rig. So I don't think we need to have gloom and doom on this, Doug. I think that we're gonna authorize uh, Brian to do a little negotiation and I'm cautiously optimistic this will turn out to the ad advantage for the town. I guess the only thing I would wonder is they have taken us on our word because we've never broke a contract before and have ordered it knowing that we have come through in the future, would they require a deposit? I'm, I'm asking, I don't know. So what? So what if they do? Well, when we would, we would have to come up with a deposit in the, the fiscal year ahead of when we order the truck. That's fine, but they couldn't. I can't imagine that they would require a huge deposit. Another sidebar, Mr. Chairman, where is all this background noise coming from? Does anybody hear it besides me? No, I can hear it too. Somebody, a woman's voice talking. Is there a mic? I'm not sure. There's nobody else other than the board who, who's got it, who, who's unmuted right now. We're getting crosstalk from somebody else then. Nat, go ahead. So this is part of the deal. We don't know what they're going to say. We don't know how they're going to react. It might be positively my line of thinking. That might be not so much. It might be they going to expect deposits in the future. If we do, we would break this contract. Let's just hear what they have to say and then make a decision. Absolutely right, Nat. Okay. Good, good the, motion, the motion on the floor is to authorize Brian to have those discussions. Is there any more discussion? Will Brian then report back to us before we make the other decision? That's how it's going to yes. work. Okay. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you both, Hugh and Brian. Thank you. Uh, yeah, hey, Jenna. You, I, I do appreciate Hugh uh, taking a step back and kind of looking at problems with a fresh set of eyes. So uh, thanks. Same here, Hugh. Thank you very much for looking after the town. Uh, Jenna's promise, placemaking grant. So first thing I want to clear up about this, I had misunderstood it is not for Jenna, it's not for the cafe, it's for uh, Jenna's house. Um, so it, it is going to be an outdoor patio space, but it's not related to the cafe. Uh, but this is, um, the, the, there is a grant program out there for, uh, kind of placemaking and beautification. And um, what this is, th this is for Jenna's Promise going out for the grant and they would like the endorsement of the town to go along with it. Uh, the town won't be acting uh, in any of this other than our endorsement of, of development you know, it'll be at Jenna's house rather than the cafe, but uh, it is still our downtown development. Okay. Is there anyone from Jenna's Promise that wants to speak to it or? I see Greg here. I'm not sure if uh, Olivia or, oh, there's Olivia. Okay, so I'll unmute uh, both Greg and Olivia. 
Uh, yeah, I can kind of give a little update on it. So um, the purpose of the grant is to kind of beautify communities and really create um, public community spaces within our towns. So that's uh, what we would goal, our goal would be for this grant for um, Jenna's house would be to kind of create a community space on the outside of um, Jenna's house and just have a covered patio, some seating, um, some landscaping and everything would be for the community. So we really just um, are looking for a letter of support from the town. Okay. Uh, I guess I would open it up to board members. Is there anyone that has any questions of either Olivia or Greg? Jenna's house is the church. Yes. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, um, Kyle. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Olivia, where exactly is it? Would it be in the front or the side, the back? I'm just trying so, to visualize. Yeah, um, good question. It would be on the side with all the grass because the one side is um, parking. Mm -hmm. And so it would be on the side. Um, if you're like looking at the building, it would be on the right. So with all the trees and kind of along the wood line. Mm -hmm. And so when you say it's for the um, community, you mean like people that are coming to take, let's say a class or go watch a movie, they, they could then sort of hang out there if they wanted to or? Absolutely. I mean, um, the top floor of Jenna's house will be a community space. So the space will be open to anybody in the community. Like the outside space will be open pretty much 24 seven to anybody in the community that wants to use it. It's not limited to events or um, any of the services there. So it'll be kind of a space for everyone. Thank you. Doug? I'm, I'm wondering what's the approximate size of the uh... Of the patio and the cover and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so the patio, I mean, it's kind of an estimate right now, but we're thinking about 14 feet by 14 feet. And then the covered structure would be, I think, like, I think it's 12 feet by 10 feet or something like that. Um, and then that would include like a walkway to it. Um, in the future, I mean, we hope to have an outdoor stage, which would kind of, this won't, that won't be a part of the grant, but, um, It'll kind of be a place for that. And then we'll have uh, picnic tables, stuff like that. Thank you. Yeah. And one more question. This is the Better the better Places grant? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the, I think the minimum, I think you win anywhere between 5000 to $20,000 for that grant? Yes, yeah. So, and how much would you be trying to go for? Um, so we are going for the higher end. I'm not exactly 100% sure on the numbers right now, um, but we will be showing that a lot of, um, to kind of fit the whole scope of the project, it'll come from different places. So we've received a few other grants with the recovery center for some playground equipment. Um, we, I mean, there'll be in-kind donations from landscapers and stuff like that. So it'll kind of be probably around 13 to 15,000 is what we'll be asking for from this grant. Any further questions? And you would be providing a, a letter that needs to be signed uh, with some wording, or are you looking for it beyond town letterhead? Um, yeah, we would need it to be on town letterhead. I mean, I can provide a rough outline if that works for everyone. Yeah. Um, and you can add whatever you feel like, but um, yeah, whatever is easiest. Okay, because Brian would just look for some uh, input onto what you're looking for in this letter. Yes. Yeah. If you already had something, if you could provide a model, that would be great. And then I can touch it up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that would save me some time. So I guess I would entertain a motion. Uh, I would open it back up for discussion, ask the motion in a second if I get one. And then we would open it up for public input if there's any. Motion that we, that Brian writes a letter of support on behalf of the select board for this uh, place making grant for Jenna's Promise. Jenna's House. Uh, it is still Jenna's Promise. It was just in the. I see. Okay. The specific location is Jenna's House. Okay. Thank you. We'll second that if you uh, change it to allow the chairman to sign for the board. Is that okay? 
It's okay so, with the chair. Uh, doesn't matter to me uh, if that's a friendly amendment that you would be uh, accepting to. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion from board members? Or I will open it up to anyone from the public. Okay, I'm not seeing any board members. Brian, is there anyone that would like to speak? Uh, I see at least Athena. So I'm going to ask you to unmute Athena. Hi, uh, I'm Athena. I'm a village trustee. And I just like to say that that's a really uh, exciting thing that you guys are doing. I know I've like gone jogging back there like since before the building was even bought and it's it's a really nice spot. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have any, <clears throat> excuse me, do we have anyone else? I'm not seeing anybody. Just a reminder, uh, if you want to comment, then you'll have to raise your hand. You can do that on video or uh, even better, if you open the participants tab on your screen, you can click on a uh, raise hand button. That's the easiest way to make sure that I, I see your question. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody else. I'll put the question before the board. Are we ready for the vote? Sure. Seeing all, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you, Olivia and Greg. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you. your support. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I guess next item is the budget. All right. So let me do the screen share again. Okay, so uh, the big news on the budget is right now we show a growth on the amount to be raised by taxes of uh, it's 2.6% over our written budget last year. But if you recall, uh, we had a couple a uh, couple items that were that made modifications to the budget during town meeting that raised the uh, that raised the amount to be raised by taxes to one million nine hundred one thousand six hundred fifty nine dollars, and this year's proposed budget is one million nine hundred seven thousand six hundred forty five dollars. So about a uh, six thousand dollar increase, which works out to be less than 1% growth. So we're looking at a, a growth of uh, less than 1% over current year's taxes. So I'm gonna highlight a couple of the areas that we talked about since our last budget meeting. Uh, one of the first places I want to go is uh, an error we had last time was the estimated fund balance to reduce taxes uh, was a typo last time. Uh, it looks like we're going to be able to contribute 100,000 uh, to reduce taxes. Then we've got our Let's see, we've got the amount in from the village for fire. I'm just trying to run over and hit a few of the highlights last time. So our fire contract is an increase of 3%. Village minutes suggest that it that 3% would be the worst scenario and that they still have some numbers to crunch and it could be a little bit less. Right, that might come in a little bit in our favor. And so we uh, can hope for been. that. Um, let's 
Let's see, no changes. That's really the, the, the key to this. You want to bring up and show where the we can demonstrate the 37,000 for the bridge? Yes, thank you. That's So uh, to make it clear, uh, we have changed the line items on line 383, if you're looking at the spreadsheet, uh, to $37,500 to be contributed to the Bridge and Culvert Reserve Fund. Uh, as instructed by the voters at town meeting. Um, so that's where those changes, that, that's where that change will show up in the, um, in the budget. The change. And then uh, in a prior draft uh, that wasn't shown as a line item. When the voters gave us that thirty-seven thousand uh, dollar increase, the anticipation was we were going to work on Scribner Bridge last summer uh, because of the pandemic and not being able to do that. This way, it, it satisfies Walter's concern of where the money is and where it's going. So we show it transferring into the reserve fund, and then we anticipate pulling it right back out for this next uh, proposed budget because we. In anticipate we will be working on the Scribner Bridge this summer. Yes. And then you may want to jump down to the last box that shows the cash on hand where you came up with 100,000. All right. So. So very quickly, what this demonstrates is that we have an estimated, we have actual cash reserves, uh, actual cash on hand of $611,000. So that's how much we, we have in cash at the end of the year. We first, then to determine what our end of year balance of whether we're running a deficit or, or uh, a surplus, we take out all of the places that we have where it's not actually cash, which all totals up to $507,000. We work in the places where we've contributed that aren't things like uh, that, that are reservations that we made last year. So it's our capital equipment fund. We had promised to donate a little bit more to that, a little bit more to uh, reduce taxes, a little bit more to buildings and grounds, totaling up to 131,000, leaving us with a, we've got the delinquent taxes, leaving us with an available uncommitted balance of 127,000. We're estimating that we're going to end this year uh, at a positive 22,000. So it gives us a, an estimated total cash on hand at the end of next financial year of 150,000. So we're, and we anticipate using that reserve uh, for paying down the budget and our tax anticipation reserve fund, which uh, when we were given the authority to create the anticipation fund, this is how it was envisioned to be funded. Related to that, we've got a little reminder about uh, all of the bills that we have due in the first quarter. This is mostly what our tax anticipation reserve fund goes towards paying for. 
so that we don't have to borrow any money uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, so we are still, we have more, we have quite a bit of expenses in the first quarter and our tax anticipation reserve fund is still uh, underfunded coming in around 230,000 when we have about 330,000 uh, total to be spent in the first quarter. We manage, but yeah, it's cutting it close. But this goes into our tax rate. Uh, our actual tax rate was 83 cents or specifically uh, 82.72 cents on the dollar. Our estimated um, our estimated value this year is also going to be 83 cents. It's going to be a little bit over uh, or a little bit under what we had last year uh, with the rise in the grand list. But you're basically going to see level taxes. Uh, I've got it worked out here for a couple different home values where we see on a you know, $150,000 home, you're going to save about $2 over the course of the year. So you're technically going to pay a little bit less taxes, but you won't really notice. It'll be virtually the same. And just so everyone's aware, this is only the municipal tax rate. Uh, their tax bill that comes includes the school, which is anticipated to have a <clears throat> pretty significant increase. But from our side, we've done the, the good work. Yeah, we recognize the challenges that all of our residents are facing and uh, put a lot of work into um, keeping our expenses down this year. Uh, it's been a lot of hard work. Our committees, all of our committees uh, worked really hard at it and helped keep this at a, at a low, low cost. And before anybody asks a question, uh, with what we just agreed to do from Hugh's request, if we are able to get out of the contract with the uh, Clarks and have some kind of a savings by going with a little bit cheaper truck, uh, that doesn't affect this taxes at all because it, it is a money in, money out that gets come out of uh, the reserve fund. Uh, the only thing that would help us is uh, it would leave a little bit more in the reserve fund, so we would have a little bit higher amount for a, a buffer. Yeah, our reserve fund, uh, the truck will, it is currently capital equipment and the new truck will also be capital equipment. So it will be paid for out of this, out of the capital equipment reserve fund and we cannot spend that money on any other purpose. So even though it saves us a little bit of money, we can't redirect that to any place else. Uh, and it won't have an effect on your tax rate because of that. Um, in 2025, uh, we're going to be dipping pretty low in our capital reserve fund. So anything we can do to save money on that reserve fund will be of great benefit uh, in the future when, as, as we're replacing equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Brian. I think that's the highlights, right? Yep. Okay, I'll open it up to board members for questions. Good job. Brian, I'm assuming that this includes um, all those sheriff numbers that we didn't have. Yes, these do. Assuming. These are the updated sheriff. Okay. Uh, uh, for patrol and uh, and communications. Uh -huh. So the communications went up a little bit from an earlier draft, but is still, uh, it's up a little bit from an earlier draft, but it's still down from last year. Significant. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, this isn't pertinent to this, this budget, but I, I think we're our, uh, um, have some unpleasant surprises coming down the road with regard to to the sheriff's department. I think it's very difficult 
you know, it's, it's wonderful that he's holding a holding raises to three percent. But but my experience is that over budgets, if you don't if you don't go with the budget, you end up with a shortfall, and there's a big there's a big penalty to pay later. And I so I, I just think that you know there's nothing we can do about it. it, it we have a committee studying where we go with law enforcement. Uh, I'd also like to say that I noticed that the uh, the governor did an executive order consolidating the uh, um, lo the law enforcement departments or starting down that road, and that had, would have something. I think Roger spoke about what that might do with our with our uh, uh, some of the of his employees up there in in, in communications. Exactly correct, Doug. Anyone else? Is there anyone from the public who has anything they'd like to ask or concerns express? And Brian, I trust you're looking. Yeah, uh, I've got everybody's photos up and I don't see anybody raising their hand. Okay. Uh, is the board prepared to adopt this budget as presented or do we want to uh, uh, take a little more time on it? Oh, I, I think I do have a member of the public. Okay, I'll open it up. Okay, Kim. So I only have one grape. Um, thanks for all your hard work on budgeting. And that would be the health officer um, getting a, a raise. I have put in minimum of five different calls and have gotten no response. I did talk to Brian two or three times, um, but whoever is working in that position, um, if they're busy, I think would the, be the minimal. If they're getting paid money that they call back and say, we're really busy, sorry, we can't deal with you. I did receive your call, thank you. And so I'm um, disappointed that the, a raise was given to some um, entities who don't have the ability to even make a phone call back. But that's my great, sorry. Have a good night. Thank you, Kim, that's duly noted and we will pass it along. Uh, one of the main reasons for the the raise was it had been about two decades since they had gotten a raise. Just be volunteer. Do we have anyone else? I'm not seeing anybody else. Okay. All right. Uh, is the board prepared to adopt this proposed budget? Or we can sit on it we we could have another meeting if we don't feel like we're ready yet what do you think mr chairman i think unless brian finds any have you had susan just put different eyes on this yet i intend to have uh susan and the um the auditors take a look at this and, and help me with just in a normal year, yeah, more people are able to look it over and read it uh, than has been so far this year. So uh, I'm not expecting anything other than errors fixed. Uh, I don't think there's gonna be any big changes. Um, oh, uh, library has a couple that, I, that are not in the print copy that you have in front of you. Um, their grant income and expenses is going up a little bit on both, but it's going to be a wash because it's going up the same amount on both. And uh, the library retirement, uh, it looks like it looks like there's a, an issue with the library retirement line item, so that's going to get a fix also. But that should re that should revise down a few dollars. And one reason I was a little hesitant on answering the question, uh, technically we would have until I believe end of week next week to finalize this and adopt it. So it make it into the town report printing. Uh, and the reason I uh, hesitate is I'm not sure if we're gonna have that special meeting next week or not. Uh, Cause one of the questions I was gonna ask the board today, tonight was, 
does the board want to take up a position on any of the warning uh, articles that we will be putting out there? And if we did, there might be a fair amount of discussion that we want to have. And we are going to have uh, the town village merger question before the voters. There's going to be a uh, cannabis uh, opt-in question before the voters and an ATV question before the voters. We could take a position on any, all, or none of those articles, but that is something I was going to ask the board tonight. If we did want to think about that, possibly we would not have time tonight to get those positions together, but uh, we could meet again next week at a special meeting. Did you mention the merger article? Yeah, there's, you know, that's one that uh, will be in there. Okay, just want to make sure yeah. you mentioned it. Yeah. I, there's at least one of those that I would hope that the select board does take a, a position on, but. Okay. Uh, so Eric, are you, sorry, are you saying then that we, we could adopt this next week at a special meeting? Yes. I think I'd feel more comfortable with that if if Brian's planning to get more eyes on it between now and then. And yeah, I, I'd numbers. like to. Um, what you've done in the past is you've adopted, and then said, you know, barring changes under a certain amount. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you are willing to meet next week, um, then yeah, hold the whole thing for next week. Uh, like I said, I'm not anticipating anything other than error fixes, but there's going to be a couple, so we may as well. Yeah, hold on to next week. Okay, let me uh, informally just poll the members right now. Monday, the trustees have a special meeting, and I believe Zoom is taken on Tuesday and Wednesday as well, correct? Uh, it is, but uh, Monday, the trustees should be finished uh, before seven o'clock. Okay, so Monday I spoke night. to Scott and uh, Meredith today, and uh, they said that they had kind of anticipated that we might need Zoom later in the day, so they started their meeting early enough that they anticipate being done in time for us. Okay, so next Monday is fine. Okay, if everybody's available next Monday, I'm sh I think we'll probably get to that place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are going to pass over adopting this tonight. And unless there's any further comments on it or from the board or from the public, we'll move on. I don't know that we really gave, you know, we gave the public a, a chance to weigh in on that. Yep. I, think. I don't see anybody else anyway. Okay. The next item is reviewing ballot questions. And I would remind everyone the purpose of this topic right here is the ballot and how it appears in the warning and not discussion on the merit of the of the article. Uh, these are some articles that were brought in by petitioners. In a normal year, it would be uh, with 130 signatures. In this current environment, we did not require that of petitioners. But we do have two articles that have been brought before the select board for put into the warning. One is a, uh, will be a binding vote and the other one is a uh, uh, non-binding. So with that, and I understand there's been some wording change agreements that have been worked out with Shane, uh, who's the uh, uh, petitioner for the opt-in of the cannabis bill. Yep. Normally that would not be allowed because if you have a petition with 130 signatures on it, it can only be put in and re, uh, show what the people actually signed. But because this year we're not requiring the signatures and it's on the select board's own doings that we're putting it in, we do have that flexibility to change some of the wording as long as I believe we stay within the, the intent of the petitioner. And working with the petitioner and the select board, I think we can come up with language. I would restrict the discussion to the select board and the petitioner until you know we get to a point where we have had all of our questions answered and then we can open it up to the public. 
And with that, I guess I would look for Brian to read the latest or show on your screen, possibly the latest wording that is being proposed from Shane. Okay. So it should be up on your screen now, but I'll go ahead and read it also just to make sure. I know we've got a couple of people by phone, so just to make sure everybody has it. Uh, the suggested wording now is, shall the select board of the town of Johnson establish a cannibal, cannabis control commission composed of Johnson residents whose purpose would be to study state laws and regulations regarding the legaliz legalization of the retail sales of cannabis, facilitate community discussion on whether to approve the legal sale of cannabis in Johnson, and work with community stakeholders to make recommendations to the select board regarding municipal regulation of this retail sale of cannabis in Johnson. So um, this is, uh, I believe, uh, Shane, I'm gonna ask you to unmute, but uh, I believe this is the revision that you are asking for for this uh, petition or, or, or ballot question. Yes, um, the original language would have been a full opt-in question. Um, and this is, this is kind of half of that. Uh, part of us, if we were to opt in, uh, part of that process would be to set up this uh, cannabis control commission on a local level so that, you know, we have a local uh, regulatory body of those, those retail establishments that might come. Um, but after talking to a few people and, uh, and Nat reached out and kind of proposed uh, this approach of um, having the conversation as a town and, and using the Cannabis Control Commission as one way to do that. Um, another piece of that is there is a statewide Cannabis Control Board that is currently in the process of being formed uh, and they will be um, setting out a whole uh, a whole list of regulations and recommendations to the legislature that may change the way this looks going forward. So uh, part of the job of this, this local board would be to take a look at those rules and, and regulations as they come out and to uh, be an educated kind of voice on, on how we want to go forward as a town. Um, so I don't let Nat say any more that he thinks Thanks, yeah. Um, I think the reality is that um, regardless of how you feel about it, sooner or later, somebody is gonna petition the town to, um, to opt in, to have a vote to opt in to retail cannabis sales in Johnson. Um, and the, the thinking is instead of just going ahead and opting in right now, let's do our homework let's let the state settle some of their issues in terms of what the regulations are actually gonna be because as, as Shane mentioned, they're, um, they still have not formed their cannabis control board. The legislation is probably gonna change a little bit this year. So we don't know exactly how or what it's gonna look like, what sort of local control there might be or might not be. Um, and to start leading conversations with the community about what they want, um, would want retail sales of cannabis to look like in Johnson if they want it, if they want it at all. So I think it's really great that uh, Shane's brought this forward and uh, I, um, I hope we, we can uh, move forward with it. Okay, with that, I would open it up to any select board. Um, you got more, Nat? Also, this is one that I think the select board should take a position on. Um, I think it's important that the community um, prepares um, for the eventual inevitable um, petition that the that the uh, voters will have to vote on this sooner or later. Thanks. Thank you, Nat. I open it now to board members. Um, I just Kyle? have a question. Um, when you say community stakeholders, Shane, and I guess Nat, who who were you, who did you have in mind? Something that's really important to me is just, um, and what I've been reading and in, in hearing is that the way that the law is written right now, it, it's, it's deeply flawed. It's not equitable at all to people of color, to minorities, to women, to small business owners, small farmers. So um, 
when I think of community stakeholders, I'm thinking about those populations um, as well as, you know, our current, um, I guess I'm thinking Johnson Works, I'm thinking um, 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 Planning Commission, perhaps, um, our Racial Justice Committee, perhaps, you know, um, those types of folks. So um, I was just Absolutely. curious what you were thinking about. Absolutely, and I would add uh, Healthy Glamoil Valley and other yeah. uh, prevention partners. Um, certainly, Jenna's Promise, I think, um, would want to have a seat at the table. Um, uh, you know, recreation committees, but yeah, absolutely all of that. Good question. Yeah, and I agree completely. Um, the the equity piece is one of the the biggest pieces that I think we us having local control gives us the ability to ensure that there, there's some, if we do go down this road, there's some equity in, in how we go about doing that. Cause I definitely don't want some, you know, big cannabis company coming in and, and taking over our town. So, hey, thank you. Someone mentioned, uh, or a couple of people mentioned actually fairly late this afternoon that we might not want to call this a cannabis control commission because that has very specific legal, um, definition under Act 164, whatever the, the state thinks. So um, I'll just throw that out there too. I'm not sure that that's exactly what we want to call this thing. That may be something we want to discuss at this point because putting this article forward, we may want to, and we can reword it uh, to make some tweaks on it. And that may be a tweak that we should consider. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you or Shane have suggested language? No, I, I, I think um, Jessica might, um, but I saw Doug had a question before, if you wanted to wait to open it up, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't have a question. I, I have, a, it, it's my thought that, that uh, I think it's really unfortunate that this is up. I don't think where they have 130 signatures or, uh, or none that once the petition is there, a substantial change isn't authorized and this is not the same thing. So I don't think this is, would be proper to go forward, you know, as Eric is saying, we can. I don't think this is, uh, I don't think that uh, the petition once submitted, the stakeholder isn't authorized, isn't a party and authorized, you know, the presenter isn't authorized to negotiate uh, a new thing. It's as it's presented, you know. I think it's unfortunate, but that's my view of the, uh, of the process. And Doug, I would just argue that I believe normally that is the case. Uh, if there was 130 signatures on his petition, we could not by law change the wording as it's presented to us. Uh, what we had done earlier back in December was we committed to the public if anybody came in with a petition we would not require them to get the signatures. We would put the article in the warning on our own authority to do so. And if we're doing it on our authority, I believe we can change the wording. That's my I think, take. I think you just stated my argument for me. Because you would put the petition, you put the article in on your authority, but it's not changing it. I mean, I, I don't like the, I don't like that. I don't like an up or down. I like more of a compromise, but that's where I think we are. Well, uh, that's a good question. I guess I would put it before the board. If the board doesn't feel that we can make these modifications from what was originally submitted, then that's what we must go forward with. Question for Doug. Go ahead, Mike. So what are you saying, Doug? We have to, it, it's you, your belief that we have to go forward with the original petition or the original petitioner could drop it. Is that what you're saying? I don't know that the original petitioner can drop it even. When they they can't. They okay. Cannot. They couldn't even drop it. If, if they had 135 signatures, there was no way they could drop it. Right. Yeah, but I think that we waived the signatures and the petition is still the petition. We didn't like it, but that's what. You're probably right. 
But haven't, to... haven't changes been, the changes have already been made since the deadline, right, Eric? Yes. yes. We would have to go with the original petition. If we follow Doug's uh, reading, we would have to go with the original petition as it was handed in. I will say this is not an area that I practice in. I'm just sort of abstracting it. I think it may very well be a, uh, uh, if our, if our attorney said, yes, you can change this, that would be fine with me. I just don't want to be in a situation where, where we have a up or down vote on something and uh, even the compromise one. And it's not valid because we should have voted on the other petition. We never got a reading from an attorney, did we, Eric? No, we did not. I spoke with our attorney, but not about this specifically because the uh, we don't we don't have the full ballot drawn up yet and this was not uh, the question as originally written was pretty clear and cut and dried so I, when I spoke to the attorney on Friday I did not anticipate having to make changes to it so no we don't have an opinion about whether we can make changes or not just defies common sense that if everyone involved is amenable to making the change that we wouldn't be able to make the change. Okay, so we're at a little bit of an impasse. We're gonna to have to make a decision on this. Uh, I hate to say this, it really galls me, but I think we should have an attorney answer that question for us. Listen to you. <laughs> I said it galled me. Yes, you did. <laughs> so do we table this till the special meeting next week also? Well, I, I actually hope the attorney tells, says, if we consult him, says I'm wrong. No, I really do. If, uh, I, I guess maybe this article and the next article on the ATVs we need to have that kind of a ruling from our attorney because if we allow the article as it was presented, it's not in the proper format and could not be put in the warning for the ATV question. So uh, they both have the same issues or, or changes or concerns that we wanna make. We may not be able to make that decision tonight if the board's not comfortable. And I'm, I'm looking for some uh, input from the board. Do you want to table these two articles until we have spoken to our attorney on whether we can change them or not? I, I don't, but that's, that's me. Let me take a poll. Mike? Well, Mr. Chairman, the second, uh, the, second uh, the ATV uh, ordinance thing is totally different, isn't it? It's a non-binding, but if that was a petition in the proper format that came in by the with 130 signatures, we would have to present it in the warning because it is a legal authority of this community that they can uh, uh, determine ATV ordinances. But you said this this ATV petition is flawed. The way it's currently written, yes. If we, if we had to go with what was presented. Well, if it was flawed and we had to go with the way it was presented, we would have the option not to even present it, right? Yes. We could not, in my belief, present it the way it's currently, it was originally presented. Okay. Right, but it's been amended like this one's been amended. Exactly. So we're so it's the same situation. Yeah. You mean you mean that the one I'm looking at is it's not this is not this is not the amended one that I have in front of me. Probably not. If you're going from Brian's report. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, the ATV is, is different. The the ATV also had an, an updated request. 
Who did the update on that one? Well, let, let's get to the ATV ordinance when we get to the ATV ordinance. Okay. That's just, this doesn't need to be so complicated. I, I think that we can proceed with the assumption that we can make changes to these. If, if the board's comfortable, we could proceed with the belief that we can make these changes. Brian's gonna, uh, could get with the attorney for our uh, next Monday night meeting when we adopt the budget. We could also then formally adopt these uh, uh, articles. What I have an appointment to speak to our attorney tomorrow about the ballot questions. Um, Anticipating that we would that we might make some changes to it tonight, I made the appointment uh, to speak to them in the morning. Okay. So, would we like to proceed believing that we can change these and not finalize a decision on whether they'll be put in the warning or not, and or how they'll be put in the warning until Monday night? Yes, that sounds good. Okay, Doug, you comfortable with that? It, it seems that that we're sure. Okay. Because we're not we're not putting them in the warning, and we're going to ask about it. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Can we hear from the public too, just to see what? Well, before we open the public, I'm, I'm looking for some possible changes to what was a, presented here because of the uh, legality issue with the, the control um. commission. Well, again, and I, I, I would like to hear from Jessica because she is a prevention okay. specialist and she has some insight, uh, specialized insight into this. If there's no further comments from the board, then why don't we open it up to Jessica first and then the rest of the public? Okay, Jessica, you can go ahead and unmute. Okay. Um, so I've read the, the Act 164 several times, and one of those readings was today um, in preparation for this meeting. Um, because a Cannabis Control Commission is named in Act 164, so it would be a statutory body, I believe that we need, if we're going to do it this way, that we need to say a Temporary Cannabis Control Study Commission because it's, in a, it's, it's not the actual Cannabis Control Commission that you would be putting in place if you were to opt in. This might be a larger stakeholder where the Cannabis Control Commission could be like the Alcohol Commission or the Alcohol Board, um, which is the select board. Um, there's, the town would need to decide who they want on their Cannabis Control Commission. At this point, it might be a different group of people. So I would, encourage the addition of the word temporary before cannabis, and then after control, the word study. And that should take care of the, um, the statutory difference between the what you're creating and what's in the Act 164. Um, okay, let me pose that question to Nat and uh, the petitioner, Shane, who um, is that a, what you would consider, although not a friendly amendment, a friendly amendment? Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly open to it. Okay. It's still within the intent of what you wanted. Yes. In, in your petition. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Jessica? Or anybody have any questions for Jessica? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to open it up now to anyone from the public who would like to uh, comment? Well, I've got Jessica up again, so I'm gonna call on okay. her first. And I would just remind everyone Sorry. that the purpose of this particular part of the agenda is only talking about the article and how it's being presented, mm -hmm. not the merits. Go ahead. Right. Um, I, I do, from a prevention standpoint, have a couple more potential word changes. Um, I had unmuted myself, or I had muted myself, so I apologize, and then I couldn't unmute when you had called on me. Um, so looking further down, um, 
under bullet two, um, it says facilitate community discussions, and that's really vague. Um, so we might want to clarify that of what types of discussions. Um, so on topics related to potential outcomes, short or long term, that, that, that would be a suggested um, addition to that bullet. And then um, the next bullet down, um, it says work with community stakeholders to make recommendations to the select board regarding it says municipal regulations currently, but it might be prudent to put in additional municipal regulation and then in parentheses beyond the CCB. And for those who don't know, the CCB is the Cannabis Control Board at the state level that's being created um, and should be convening some point in, in January. And they're the governing body that will be making um, uh, changes and recommendations to Act 164 throughout um, this next year, including into uh, early next year. So, and retail sales would not be able to go into place until, um, for most businesses, until um, October of 2022. So, with, there's time for this. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, that's an important point. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Jessica, did you have a specific recommendation for the third bullet? Yes. Uh, third bullet would be between the words regarding and municipal, putting in the word additional. And then after the word regulation, putting in in parentheses beyond the CCB. So anything that we as a community would be wanting to put in, in addition to the Cannabis Control Board. Okay, thank you, sorry. I was still getting yep. the previous one, but yeah. All right. So, and that's all, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, then Jackie, I've got you up next. Uh, if you can unmute. Hey, thank you, Brian. Hey, everybody. Good to be with you. Um, just a couple of things. You know, uh, when when this um, first came up and Eric said, you know, we we're going to change some wording on this. Um, what I'm observing is that it's not at all a simple word change, but really um, a pre pretty major change in the original uh, intent of Shane's original um, uh, the original thing that you that Shane had wanted to happen. So it just seems like a, a really big shift from one statement to the other. Um, and I don't really know what what all happened there. And then um, and Jess uh, from Healthy Memorial Valley, I, I appreciate you and all you do. Um, I'm assuming that um, Healthy Lamoille Valley is not in agreement with uh, with retail sale of cannabis, and now we're kind of Jess is kind of helping to rewrite the whole thing for a third time. So it's a little bit sloppy, and I'm going back to to Doug's um, original point, and um, it's a little bit confusing. Can anyone like what happened? Um, should I answer? I'll sure. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I, after I put this uh, forward and had had a back and forth with Brian about it, um, a couple of people had reached out to me. Uh, Jess was one of them. And, uh, you know, she had a conversation with me that um, it, it made a lot of sense. She basically said, we have time um, and we don't need to rush into, uh, you know, the opt out or sorry, the opt in or, or not question just yet. Um, and we can have more of a fleshed out conversation um, about this. And, and so it, my, my intent to, to get to that is, is really just to move the ball forward on this. And uh, so I, I do think this is, you know, a significant step forward um, in, in this conversation um, around whether or not we, we do this in Johnson. Um, but, it, you know, to, to answer your question of what happened, uh, you know, I had a conversation with a few different people and, uh, you know, Nat, I think, suggested a very, very fair 
middle ground um, between, you know, what I had wanted to do and what um, maybe some others wanted to have happen, which was nothing. So um, hope that answers. Thank you. And to Jackie's. Thank you, Jackie. Point, you know, turn. So we may or may not be able to do this. All right, and uh, Kirsten. I've got you up. Uh, okay. Did you have a question about the cannabis specifically or was it a question about the legality of making changes? Yeah, it was a question about the legality of making changes uh, so, um, regard, regarding the ATV question. So we're operating on the assumption that we can make the changes, uh, but we're gonna get a, we're gonna run it by our attorney before we actually put it up on the ballot. Okay. But I think um, we can, uh, a number of the board members think we can, but we're not attorneys. Right. Um, I just thought as it's such a, it was revised into such a simple, basically two cent, uh, one sentence statement that perhaps we could get feedback from the board right now and just make sure everyone thinks it would be fine and then just run it by the lawyer after that instead of not visiting it at the moment. Yeah, that, that's what we're gonna try and do. I, I just wanna finish up with the cannabis questions. Of course, yes, of course. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other cannabis related questions? Uh, Kim, I see you. Thanks, I just am very grateful to Shane for bringing this to the table. It's been something that popped onto planning commission screen and um, didn't really move forward. And um, uh, just by the discussion that's happening tonight, it's great. I wanted to echo um, what Kyle's um, thoughts were about uh, just um, all the different entities and being inclusive of um, trying to get everybody to the table. So thank you, Shane, and thank you everyone for being a part of this discussion. Okay, is there anyone else, Brian? I'm not seeing anybody else. Uh, okay. Folks who are in on the phone, um, I think it's star six nine to raise your hand. Star six uh, something to raise your hand if you're if you're on a telephone. Okay, I'm not going to ask the board uh, to vote on moving this forward, obviously, because we're going to have it reviewed by the attorney. But is the current language something that? Uh, Everyone has no objection to, I guess is what I should say. And we can push it forward to our attorney and see if this is allowable. Um, yeah, I'm fine with the changes that Jess proposed. Okay. I am looking for board members. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mike? Yes. Doug? Yeah, I think it's okay. It, it'll get voted up or down. Okay, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with it. I agree. I mean, this is this is very unusual. <laughs> so yes, it is an unusual. Process, and we might be, we might be, uh, we might be taking a little advantage of our this crazy year. But let's see what the lawyer says. Well, the worst case is we would have to just uh, put in the warning, the original uh, article as Shane presented. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the ATV ordinance or uh, ATV uh, petition that was submitted. Again, uh, there's been some major um, changes proposed. And again, we don't know whether we can make them or not. Uh, what was originally submitted, I don't think it, it was in the proper format and could be put into a warning. This one will be a non-binding one. And I would just remind everyone the, the purpose of the discussion at this point is how this will look in the warning 
going forward, uh, obviously without the attorney's uh, reply yet. Uh, it'll be a, another point when we will talk about the merits of it. And with that, um, Brian, would you please unmute Kirsten? Okay, Kirsten, you can unmute yourself. And just as full disclosure, I did reach out to Kirsten and did share that I felt the petition as she had written and presented would not be allowable. And if she was able to come up with some language that uh, you know, was very well in the proper format, and this would be something that I would see as in the proper format. And I guess I would open up the board members before we open up to the public. So that whole thing has been brought down to one sentence now. Yes. Yeah. If there's no board member comments, I would open it up to the public. Okay. okay. I've got uh, Leah Kilvadieva up first. Um, hi. Um, I would just like to ask Brian if you could read the statement because I'm oh. on the phone and I can't really uh, see what's in it. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. I, I forgot. Uh, yes. So, so for our uh, individuals who are, are dialing in, uh, the New proposal uh, replaces all four of the previously suggested ballot questions with the one question that reads, shall the town of Johnson revoke the ATV ordinance created on June 19th, 2006? I have a question. Go ahead, yes. Matt. What's the, without getting into the merits of doing this, what would the practical impact be? This, this would be a non-binding vote. Um, obviously, if it was an overwhelming vote, the select board traditionally uh, listens to those kind of inputs from the voters. It would be uh, a decision of a, the future board after town meeting to take it up and what action they were to, uh, gonna do. As I understand it, um, I've never been involved with revoking an ordinance, but. I believe the voters have the same rights to petition and have a special town meeting. If we revoke the ordinance, they could draw up a petition, have a special town meeting and uh, overrule the select board on revoking the ordinance. And I would understand it would go back to our current ordinance if the voters so, and that would be a binding vote at that special town meeting. So what happens if there's no ATV ordinance? What, what, what are, are people allowed to drive ATVs in Johnson and to what extent? They would be uh, subject to state laws, whatever those laws are. Uh, we would not authorize them on any of our highways. Um, they would have by statute rights on class four highways. They'd be allowed on class four, but not on two or three. True, yes. Thank you. So, um, Eric, revoke means just to to do away with the the whole ordinance as it's written. Yes. And then the select board should the new board should they choose to would create a a new one. No, not necessarily. This question would be just to revoke the ordinance. Just to revoke. The, the, the this is a, would be advisory only uh, because the, the because the ordinance has passed uh, there is no ability by the voters to make changes to it uh, it it has been passed for too long uh, and there was an opportunity to raise a petition and that petition. Uh, if you recall, the, there was a successful petition to reconsider it, and at that meeting, it was upheld and enacted. Uh, 
back 14 years ago. Uh, so that ordinance is already there. There's no ability to, by the voters to actually like revoke it. But what the voters can do is ask the select board to revoke it. So at a future meeting after town meeting, the select board will have heard from a majority telling them either to revoke it or to not revoke it. And then they uh, decide on a, on a board level. Right. Mm -hmm. And as part of that decision, they may also decide to revoke the old one and make a new ordinance, or they may revoke it and leave it up to just uh, state statute. Mm. But that okay. would all be board decision. Sorry to keep piping in, but there are 47 people here. And I think they all, usually we don't have a crowd this size. I'm, I'm guessing that they have uh, strong feelings on either this or marijuana. So since we're not discussing the relative merits of this tonight, are we gonna have, are we gonna schedule our informational meetings tonight so people know when they can come and talk about these things? Uh, pos uh, are we talk we're not talking about that yet um, in your report, are we? But we did add the item of uh, the board taking positions on any of the warned articles if and that might be where the board could open it up for more of the discussion on the merits of the uh, individual articles and public could also weigh in. Okay, well, because we were, we were gonna have two informational sessions in advance of- Yes, and we're yeah. still gonna do that. Okay, thanks. I think we could set those dates tonight as part of this discussion or part of the, the later discussion. Uh, so people have know and have the opportunity to come. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing, I believe, and maybe Rosemary or Brian can correct me, we have to have one informational on the Saturday prior to town meeting. Is that correct? And then the other one could be during the week? I thought it was just one within 10 days of the meeting. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it. For some reason, I thought it had to be on a Saturday. No, I think that was just a discussion we had that we wanted to do one during the week and one on on the weekend okay uh, but no I, I, my understanding is the same as rosemary's that is a the, day the strict requirement is just one meeting within 10 days okay 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 let's open it up to the public and remember this is just comments on the uh how the uh petition is being presented and going in the warning and not all the merits at this point okay. I uh, can I see nope you put your hand down okay Ken I see you there uh, you'll have to unmute yourself yep I would just like to ask why she was wanting to revise it from the specialized residents should be able to control their roads um, She's putting it out that it should be changed completely. And the argument started and the petition started with her road and her road only. I, uh, if, if Ken, I can address that. You're probably looking at the original petition as she presented and Brian had printed. Yep, I read them both. I'm yeah, just okay. saying, why, why is the, there a sudden amendment to just to get rid of all the first ideas of adjustment because the, whole the, thing. the the format that was put in with the first uh version of that petition was it going to fly it would not be allowable because it had uh items in there that would were prejudice in uh reasons for doing or having this and supporting it and we we cannot have a article that is in a, in any way prejudiced to the voters to support something or not. It has to be open-ended. Will the voters or shall the voters direct the select board to do X, Y, and Z? And, and there can't be any uh, for the reasons that we don't like it or something like that. And that was the main reason it had to be redone. We would not have allowed that to go in the warning if, if it had not been changed. 
it's still kind of prejudiced because it's excluding the group from the all-inclusive Johnson. Now, right yeah. now, right now, it's not. This is this is strictly to the proper format. That that is correct. The way it's presented right now, shall the town of Johnson revoke the ATV ordinance? That could be the same as shall the town of Johnson revoke the uh, the dog ordinance. This is a right that the voters have, and they can put, submit an article in this format. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else, Brian? Yep, I see uh, Bobby Rooney. Okay, Bobby. How's it going? Good. Great. Thank you for coming tonight. So I have a question, and I'm curious if any of the board members collaborated on this issue, and if you did, who are you? What do you mean? Did anybody talk about this aside from this board meeting with the petitioners? Yes, I said at the beginning, full disclosure, I did reach out to Kirsten and share with her that the way it was presented, it would not be allowable. And because this is a unique year, and if you heard what Doug said, he and I have differing opinions, I believe we can change the wording of the petition uh, and put it on the warning because it's being done under our the select board's authority. In a normal year, if that had come in as a petition with the, the 130 signatures in that format, the board would have the right to just, uh, you know, dis disregard it. I so also... I yeah, go ahead, Doug. Kirsten uh, got a hold of me, presented uh, number four, a previous version of number four. And uh, I believe it would, would have said, should we uh, prohibit the use of, of ATVs on four class roads? And I told her that we had no ability to prohibit the use of, the select board had no authority for that. And consequently, that, that particular section would, if she wanted it, would need, need to re be rewritten. I never yeah. talked to her. I talked to her too about some procedure things as well. I have no. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I've got a couple other people. Bobby, did that answer your question? Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kirsten, I, I've got you up again. You had a comment? Kirsten. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that um, I was really concerned about the class four roads regarding the um, runoff that's being created by the impact because they seem more related to the wilderness or, or, or to the environment because they, um, they just seem more fragile. So the class four roads was really an important part of this for me, as well as um, the village and, and the rest of the community, whoever, whoever feels the same way I do. But um, the reason I'm speaking right now is because I'm, I'm concerned um, about class four roads as well. And I thought that in the revoking the ordinance that that would be part of it. Um, but it looks like it wouldn't. So I, I, that's what I'm asking. You're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, if we revoke the ordinance, they still, ATVs have a right to go on the class four roads by state statute. That's mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And uh, Ken, you've got your hand up. Go ahead and unmute. And I'd like to say, I'm sorry, Ken, I think I put your hand down for a second, no I thought it was still up, not that you had another question. Okay. Um, so about the class four roads, we also care about the environment in the class four roads. As you all know, Brian, we've dealt with you and Brian Krause taking care of the roads, maintaining them, which the town doesn't do. So we volunteered and at our own expense took care of them. Um, also, if, so if the ordinance is removed, 
according to the town of Eden, when there is no ATV ordinance, the town of Waterville, where there is no ATV ordinance, the town of Belvedere, where there is no ATV ordinance, that means there is no ordinance saying no. There can be no ATV, so all them roads are legally used. So this is kind of futile, in my opinion. Okay, I sense we're just discussion is going to start drifting away from what the main intent of this section of the meeting was, and that was to talk about the wording of the petition. And I want uh, I will when we get to the, after the next two items in in Brian's report, we were going to have discussion on board positions on warning articles that is where the public can put uh, can voice their input on their uh, being in favor or against any of these ordinance and why do you think the select board should uh, take a position so with that I'm, I'm looking for just uh, input from the public on the wording of what is going forward and not the merits behind it so I've got a couple more members of the public, uh, Chad and Kim, I think you had your hand up earlier. Uh, so Chad, I'm gonna ask you to unmute now. Um, but again, if this is about the merits, there will be another opportunity to talk about it. So is this about how it's written or uh, do you wanna speak a little bit later? No, I just have a question on, I haven't got a chance to read the petition so is this i know what's her name kirsten kristen kristen um i haven't got a chance to read it i haven't got a chance to see it um so i i just joined on 47 minutes ago um but i'm just curious is it is this whole petition thing about the class four road erosion and runoff or is it more of us atv people getting to Main Street? This, uh, this is specifically about the whole class four, or it's, it's all about the, the ATV ordinance. So it would affect uh, all town roads. So my question is on that then, what difference on the roads is the ATV is gonna make with runoff and erosion then a 16 year old high school boy going down the road in his pickup burning out or ripping the roads up or any okay. other car going down the road. Chad, we're, we're getting into the merits of the, or, of the article and that's not where I wanna go right now. We're just gonna talk about the wording of the, of the uh, article and how it would be put in the warning. We will get to the opportunity, if you can input your uh, views on for or against uh, ATVs and what they do or don't do. It's not at this point. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And Kim. All right, go ahead, Kim. I just wanted to try to clarify about the wording. So shall the town of Johnson revoke the ATV ordinance created on blah, blah, blah. Does that mean if people were to say they wanted to revoke it, then then it, at the special meeting, you guys would be able to say Hoag Road is close to ATVs and everything else is still the same. Is that some, is that, that's the, the venue that Kirsten can take to try to get some kind of relief from what she's experiencing? This question would only address non-binding the voters desire for the select board to revoke or not the ATV ordinance. Anything that would change what the ATVs can do or cannot do would be a modification of the current ordinance. So whether we were to uh, make off limit certain highways or open up access to other highways is a modification to our ordinance. And that's a separate question from what's being asked here. But, it, but my question is, is this the venue to get to that? Is that why it's 
is that why you've referred the wording of this in this way so that eventually she can get to the road that she's interested in trying to preserve? So that would be a board decision. Um, the only thing that we would need is something in the proper format. Um, if she, there could have been a petition that came in uh, and restricted ATVs on a certain highway. You know that you know requesting that the board reopen the ATV ordinance and modify it to restrict ATVs on highway, whatever. But that's not the way this one's worded. All right, then uh, Neil. Hi, um, I think that the there were four questions and they actually were a lot more comprehensive than what this uh, single sentence is is talking about. It's certainly talking, you know, more about uh, than just the fourth class roads. And so I think that, uh, you know, something longer needs to provide a, a wider context so that voters can understand what they're actually voting on. Otherwise, they would just read one line and not really get everything that, you know, they were supposed to get about it. So my question is, is there language from the original questions that can be added back to this one? I also don't quite understand when you're talking about these questions weren't in the proper format and not allowable. That seems like a judgment that the chair made, but I know that Kirsten looked at statutes from the state of Vermont and she tried to model these questions on questions that they presented and some of them were quite comprehensive. So I don't understand why this one has to be a single sentence. I don't think it really provides enough of a context to, for the voters to make a decision. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Uh, one of the things that we have to be careful of in these articles is they cannot be leading questions for the voters that it would lead them to say something like, shall the town of Johnson revoke ATV, uh, the, the ATV ordinance? because it causes erosions on class four highways. That would be a clear violation of, of how the wording can be put in a warning. There was some suggested language in some of the prior, the original uh, uh, petition that had that kind of leading language. And that's why I had concern with it. Mm -hmm. and, and I would not have been able to support putting it in the warning the way it was written before. Okay, so if, uh, when you take a look at that very first question as originally conceived, and it asks to look at, um, address which roads um, that ATVs are allowed to use, and asks to establish uh, speed limits, noise limits, day and time of allowable ATV use, and, and it asks about I think most importantly, something about um, establishing a method for enforcement violations. None of that really is a prejudiced language. It's just trying to create the context by which if, if this were revoked, the board would then, or an ad hoc committee would then go forward and try to re-examine the issue. And so I don't understand why that language can't be put back into the question. The article. I don't think that's prejudiced language. And maybe what you just uh, quoted would not be seen that way. To you, it wouldn't. Okay. Do, do you want to throw down a? Can we, Brian? Can you put this in this yep. document that's in front of us in red or something so that we can see a proposed edit? So I'm. So Brian, if you took the uh, the first question. Yep, I'm grabbing just the first question and bringing it over. Okay. There. And if you actually just take out the second half of it, just go down to the the uh, 
you know, all the way down to the third set penalties for ordinance violations and establish a method for enforcement. And everything after that is in some ways repetitive of what's above it. So you could get, take uh, the rest of it out, leave the first half, and it would establish a much, you know, more comprehensive question in a context by which voters could understand what they're voting on. And in that case, the word suspend is there, but if you want to add revoke, um, either way, I think the spirit of suspend is simply to, you know, give a chance for the select board or an ad hoc committee to re, you know, revisit everything after 14 years. As you said, Eric, it was back in 2006, or maybe Brian said it. And there was an ad hoc committee at that time that tried to examine the issues and had um, folks from both sides, both ATV riders, people who opposed to them, and people sort of in the middle. They all um, got together and they spent several months looking at the issues and they came up with something. And then uh, if you remember the history, the, the select board at that time just rejected it out of hand. And then it went to a special session. And that special session is where the, a vote was taken and the ordinance, um, or I guess they approved uh, the select board being able to make it an ordinance. But here we are 14 years later and I think something like this question might, you know, move us forward. Okay, uh, the only issue I would see with what's presented right now is if this was in uh, a regular town meeting, I think it would be allowable because there's first one question and then if so, the select board, yada, yada, yada. Well, because it will be an Australian ballot, you don't have the opportunity to have the split question like that. Um, there might be another way to word it, but in that format, I don't think that is, uh, is correct. Okay, so how about if, um, shall the town of Johnson suspend its ATV ordinance until new regulations, blah, blah, blah properly warned and uh, maybe in the midst, you'd say, uh, addressed, suspend use in the town, yeah, addressing such things as, or addressing yeah, such things as the following. You could get rid of the if so. Yeah, at a future town meeting, comma, to address which roads to establish regulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be allowable. Okay. Yeah. How's that? Okay, Kirsten, is this uh, something that you would uh, be comfortable? This is your petition. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Um, what about question two? Would that be revisable at this time? Well, that's a, that is a question right there. I mean, you, you would want an up or down vote on that right there, I would think. You're talking about a second petition, I, I think. That addresses residents on specific roads if they weren't, uh, if, if a certain, yeah, sorry. Um, Kim brought it up about, yeah, hold on a second. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, Let me throw it out to the board first. Uh, board's thoughts, board members' thoughts on this current wording language. Um, 
because we will have to put it forward in our, with our authority. Okay, can I say something? Go ahead. So the town of Johnson amend its ATV ordinance to regulation of ATV use in the town, including addressing which roads will permit ATV use and which ones do not permit use. Would that also be something that could be acceptable? Could we, can we? I think that one does that under, uh, it says to address the following one, which roads to allow ATVs to use. Mm -hmm. I, I think that covers the same ground. Right, right. Kirsten, right. when you say, when it says which roads do you, did you wanna get more specific and say which specific, um, oh, sorry, I just lost my thought. Um, it's just that one of the petition questions did say, shall the town of Quest Johnson establish an addendum to present the ATV ordinance to allow any resident to restrict ATV access on their road in the event that he or she perceives ATV use to not be acceptable for dude. So I, I don't know if that's something that we should also explore. Like perhaps we can have more than one question. It looks like we can maybe have all of these questions. Perhaps uh, we should focus on the first three and have them written um, in such a way that is acceptable instead of narrowing it down to one question that seems to be confusing everybody. There's, there could be more than one question and they could be, um, more helpful for the community to be able to understand their options. I make a Could we look into this further? Could we look into it further and um, bring something correct, correct the language and bring it back to you in a couple of days or tomorrow or something like that? Because I, I, I feel like this is, um, Perhaps we need more time and please make a suggestion. Go ahead, not sorry. No, you're fine. Um, it, 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 it occurs to me that what really needs to happen is in, in maybe kind of where we're headed towards anyway, is this ad hoc commit, committee. I understand that this happened 16 years ago or something, 17, 18 years ago that a committee was put together where people of a lot of different views, and there's more than two sides to this, there are many sides to this, right? Uh, men came to came to the table and had some discussion about what they would want from an ATV ordinance, and together they um, came to some agreement and presented it to, to the select board. I think that's what needs to happen again, and I think, I think we need to be realistic that not everybody is going to get exactly what they want from this. We're not going to have uh, uh, this go strictly in one way or the other in terms of ATVs being allowed or ATVs not being allowed, but that there's going to have to be some compromise and there's going to be going to have to be some community discussion and coming together and and talking to each other. Um, we're not and some understanding that we're not all going to get what we want, but clearly, what's being asked of us is that instead of just pitting. The question of shall this side win or shall this side win? Can can we come together and have some community discussion about it and make a proposal that may, might um, uh, might uh, be in the best interest of the community? I would point out that we can have a discussion. The select board can have a discussion. They could set up a committee. They could say. Uh, you know, 14, 16 years have gone by. We could do this without it, but it's it's been uh, I've think that people have been hesitant to revisit this. I happen to know that the state ATV thinks organization thinks that they shouldn't or it expressed, uh, its president has expressed the view that they don't want what they feel is responsibility for all the roads. Um, it, it's a really, really tough subject. I, I would change your history a little bit about this. There was a committee, the committee made a recommendation. Uh, that recommendation was revised, the entire committee 
quit. And then the select board adopted the revised. The uh, revised one was challenged and, uh, and the, it stood because the, our citizens voted for it. You know, they had the majority. Um, the, you know, it, it's, I, I think something crucial to the understanding here is that under Title 23, uh, Section 3506, it says an all-terrain vehicle shall not be operated. Okay, the first is uh, A or 1A is relates to fourth class highways. An all terrain vehicle shall not be operated uh, except if one or more of these apply. The highway is not being maintained during snow season. By definition, that's a fourth class highway. The all terrain vehicle shall not be operated except if the highway has. If the, alter, if the highway has been open to all-terrain vehicle travel by the select board or trustees of the governing board, board and is so posted. So whatever Waterville and Eden is doing, if they're allowing them without an ordinance, it's not proper. But we have the ability to do that. Now, so looking at the, this ordinance, I still go back to, as we're dusting these things off and massaging them, I don't think we're doing the petition. I thought that, uh, I would have approached this that I thought that chains would have had to stand and that I thought that you could stay within the spirit of, uh, of uh, the of Kirsten's ones by just uh, essentially using the first sentence of her or, or, or the greater portion of the first sentence of her thing. Now, we're all gonna present that to our, uh, of the one through four. Uh, and I, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, I think we're massaging this stuff and uh, it's not the petition. And, and of course we're going ahead as if we have the ability to massage it. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Eric? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. The longer this whole thing goes on this evening, uh, the more I dislike it. Uh, it's not our job. Uh, to tweak anybody's petition, I have come to that conclusion. Uh, the first one uh, by Shane probably should stand just the way it was written. Uh, and the second one should stand the way it's written. And if it is flawed and not presentable, then so be it. It would, should not be presented. I don't think we need to sit here and tweak uh, this particular one uh, till, uh, till the cows come home. We ought to just table this and move on. Well, I, I'm hearing two board members that are voicing the opinion we do not have, or do not, they do not believe we have the ability to tweak these uh, petitions. If there are three members that believe that, then uh, we will let them stand as their pre the original presented. So I guess I, I would look. I don't quite agree, excuse me, with. Uh with Mike, I think that Kirsten's, we could stay within the substance of hers if you just took the, essentially the first sentence or the majority of the first sentences of her one through four. Because they say shelva and the, the arguments and the, the parsing of it comes later. So the word, way hers is written that there's four questions on it. Yeah. So somebody could vote two yes, two no, one yes, three no. Uh, yep. It's just a big hodgepodge. Yeah, that would be a fun read, wouldn't it? As far as oh yeah, that's what, that'll be a real blast to count. And, and that's that's one of the problems with the way the original was presented is there's an if element to it, and and like Mike points out, you could vote for one part of it and and vote no for another. Uh, it could be a complete mess. And if this can get down to one question, I think that's the proper format. And what's here right now, does that address the intent of what Kristen is looking for? Only she can tell us. Um, yes, it does. Um, uh, I just, um, to the time John suspended HEV ordinance until new regulations of HEV 
Can I have more time, please? The town is missed. Up. Well, can I have more time? If we're going to run this through our attorney, we're going to have an opinion on this one, and that would be for next Monday night. We would. Uh, I mean, we can't keep going back and forth to our attorney with if you're going to come in with another modification. I'd like to settle it tonight so we can have this run through our attorney with the other petitions or articles that will be going in the morning. We, we, we do have a hard stop coming up. We've got to make a decision and move forward. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Mike. The deadline for turning in petitions was the 14th of January, yes. which has passed. Yes. Okay. The first question is good. Um, properly warranted vote on special session. Yeah, I think we should, if that is what everyone would like to, sim to simplify it, then I can go with that. With the paragraph that we just modified, Kirsten? I, I want more time. This is really, um, I think that yesterday these questions could have been, could have been tweaked just to, so that we wouldn't have to be going through all of this right now, but I was told that they weren't working at all and I was under pressure to change them. And now I'm under a lot, I feel very, um, like I need time. And so if I could just have until tomorrow to figure out what, how to move forward, because you're not going to be showing them to your lawyer tonight, right? Like, is yeah, that What possible? time is your appointment tomorrow with the lawyer, Brian? Uh, I've got to get email with everything out by nine. This is the problem. Team. The problem with that is um, we're well beyond the deadline for petitions being submitted. If you were to change the wording tonight for something different to go before our attorney, the select board would not have the opportunity to review it first. Okay. Okay. I would rather we finalize something tonight that we can submit to our attorney. Does this capture the current paragraph up there capture what your intent was? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do we have any further comment from board members? Are there any comments from uh, the public? I do have a few comments from the public. All right, Neil, you've got your hand up. No, okay. Uh, Bobby, you've got your hand up. So when you're looking at just suspending and revoking the ATV ordinance and trying not to be prejudiced to others, there's a comment I would like to make. So two years ago on the 12th of December, my cousin who lives in Johnson was an extreme athlete and downhill skier in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And he had an accident that left him with severe limitations. And he just purchased an ATV so that he can ride it to gain a little bit of his independence and to enjoy the outdoors of this state. Bobby, I'm gonna interrupt you. You're, you're going into the merits of okay. being for or against this and that's not what we're trying to do right now. I'm, I'm looking for any wording of the, the article, uh, in, uh, comments on the wording. We will give you your opportunity to, to voice a pro or, or against uh, the article. If there is no comments about the wording of the article, is the board prepared to have this one sent forward to the attorney for review? 
I see more hands up, Eric. But yeah, we've got a few hands up. Um, okay. I would remind them not to talk to the merits of the article. We're just looking at the wording of the article. All right, Ken, I, I, you've had your hand up. Yep. Uh, I agree with Mike and Doug that, you know, the time has passed. You either got two choices with either of these petitions. They shouldn't be modified because you've already modified the way the petition was done, not needing any signatures, which in reality is kind of a shady, slick way to move something through without the public being involved. So two, two things should only happen. You either pass the petitions the way they were passed before the deadline or by your approval, or there should be no modifications to them to adjust them to appease the people who didn't follow the guidelines and stay by the approval time. And and thank you all. It's been a while since I've seen you, and I look forward to seeing you to the next one. Thank you, Ken. All right. Uh, then next up, we've got Doug Collins. Okay, go ahead, Doug. You'll have to unmute yourself. All right. Okay, I see you unmuted, Doug. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going with it. I'm good. This is ridiculous. Okay. Uh, Jen Burton. Okay, go ahead, Jen. I was under the impression that Kirsten could submit as many questions as she wanted to. I don't know what to call it besides a question, um, but can't she submit four separate ones? Do, do all four things have to be bundled in, into one or can she not submit four separate pieces? That's my question. Anybody could submit as many petitions as they want to. Isn't that what she was doing? Uh, I took it as one submission on one topic. I think it was four submissions on one topic. Maybe we could clarify that with her. What's the board yes, member? Okay. What, what's the board member's take on that? Yeah, that's what I, I mean, that's what was in the packet. And I wonder if we couldn't, I forget who said it now, maybe it was Doug, um, put those four back up and just take out whatever, Eric, you feel was judgmental or prejudice or whatever. So, I, mean, I mean, we can do that. We are dealing with a non-binding resolution here. Yeah. Um, we're spending an awful lot of time on this one article. And at the end of the day, it is non-binding. So I think that with any one of these questions, we could get a pretty good flavor of the voters' uh, intent with any of them. And I may be wrong. Maybe, maybe that question wouldn't capture the voters' intent, but I believe that you're gonna get the voters' intent with any one of these qu questions that just have an ATV ordinance attached to them. And I don't think you need four questions. I think one will give us the answer we're looking for. Do we reopen? Do we re look at the ATV ordinance? Right, but the four questions were, were addressing pretty specific things that you would have to look at in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. And I think that pleasure? was the point of, of the four questions. And I'll look for the guidance from the board. What's your pleasure? Personally, I would I would like to put the four questions up, take out whatever little word or sentence doesn't seem kosher to you, and then and then it's the it's it's the one that she submitted, you know, with those small adjustments before um, on the deadline. Eric, you can probably tell specifically what you, you thought was not kosher. Well, let's see. Uh, 
Well, okay, number four, getting down right to the end of it there. Uh, purpose of the ATV ordinance to protect animals, property, environment of the town and the possibility of erosion. That is a leading question that would not be allowable. And the, a lot of this is in that same sense and tone. And okay, that's, that's why, sorry, sorry. And that's why I did not feel it was a proper format. If this had come in in the traditional sense as a regular petition, I would not support having it put on the warning because it's not in the proper format. Now we are allowing changes to be made that um, to try to accommodate the situation this year. But uh, if this had been a, a regular year, we would not allow this to be put in the warning. Uh, Kristen could have brought up a, at town meeting under other business, a non-binding non resolution to, to address some of these issues. And it would have to follow the format of the moderator. So why don't we, for number four, just say, and I think, Doug, this was your suggestion, shall the town of Johnson undertake a comprehensive evaluation to study the environmental effects of all-terrain vehicles, use of class four roads in Johnson? Period. We can do yep. that. We can go with four different questions, though. I, I, I do I do agree with Eric that that a single question would be a lot simpler for everyone and would give us a flavor, a pretty good indication of where the voters want to go with this. Um, number three would do it pretty well. Well, number three is the equivalent of the uh, what what Kirsten had brought back the first signal should it be revoked. Yeah, it's got more context so people can kind of understand it a little bit better. Well, where I'm tending to be with Eric on is, is that uh, has to do with the four questions. I think these four questions can be all placed in the shell of the town of Johnson. The first three can be placed in, you know, just go to the first sentence and cut off all the rest of it. The, uh, the fourth one, it could be just as, as uh, uh, Kyle is suggesting. And I would think that if we run those questions by our attorney, they may very well say, you can't do something like this because it's confusing, you know? That would be a question. I would revise those four to that and ask them whether we not we could, if that those as they appear would be proper in form, you know, in, in combination. And then I would ask them, if not, is it would it be proper to switch to the question that Kirsten said was okay with her? Mm-hmm. I'd support that idea. I don't know that I don't know where they're going to come out. I really don't. Um, if uh, I think that number two would be will be shot down but that's irrelevant what I think on that, uh, shot down by our attorney. Because I think there's no way that, that we are going to, uh, that, that we're going to uh, allow residents to restrict ATV access on a public highway uh, based on their own personal, you know. Probably unconstitutional. Yeah. But, you know, I, I would, you know, I would present all those questions and the other and ask them. Okay. What's the board's take? We you don't like any of it. <laughs> yeah. And I'll get my turn to say how I feel about it at the next meeting. Oh, uh, give me one second to adjust this. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. I'm going to get him get a glass of water so nobody says I'm being disrespectful. Okay. I, 
I think what Doug was suggesting was we run all of these through our attorney. With only the first sentence as part of the uh, article. Was that correct, Doug? Yep. And your suggestion was that we eliminated the one question that uh, you could select who goes on your public road. Or... Well, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I, I, I went off. I went outside the white lines and saying I don't think that has a ghost of a chance of passing muster. But I'm not suggesting. I, I'd let the attorney make that call. Right. So as I understand it, these are the four questions that I'm asking for an opinion on. Uh, I'm going to read these out for the benefit of our callers. So be patient for a second. All right. So first, shall the town of Johnson suspend its ATV ordinance until new regulations of ATV use in the town have been established by the select board? and or an ad hoc committee properly warned and voted on at a special session or future town meeting to address the following. One, which roads to allow ATVs to use. Two, establish regulations, including but not limited to setting speed limits, noise limits, days and times of allowable ATV use and to prohibit littering. Three, set penalties for ordinance violations and establish a method for enforcement. Two, question two. Shall the town of Johnson establish an addendum to the present ATV ordinance to allow any res resident to restrict ATV access on the road in the event that he or she perceives ATV use to be a nuisance or to have an adverse effect on the value of his or her business and or property? Question three, shall all-terrain vehicle ordinance as adopted by the select board on June 19th, 2006 be rescinded? Question four, shall the town of Johnson undertake a comprehensive evaluation to study the environmental effects of all-terrain vehicle use on class four roads in Johnson? I was also suggesting that we present the question. Uh, the original one that we came up with. Well, the, the one that Kirsten said she would accept that Neil had sort of massaged. Yeah. That was that's question one on your screen. The okay. okay, all right. I'm sorry. I thought you were. No, I, I integrated integrated a couple of the questions that we hadn't made edits on with the one question that we had made edits on. That very first one, the first sentence, uh, until new regulations of ATV use in the town have been established by the select board and then the parentheses and or ad hoc committee. That and or ad hoc committee should be removed. The only, the only place that uh, regulations can be established is by the select board. Yeah. I think for consistency, you ought to keep Kirsten's four together, not join them and have that others separate. You know, it may be that these four as presented were, were or were not appropriate. And maybe the other one will be allowed, you know, that. Uh... I'm not sure I follow you, Doug. Well, on. Um... Kirsten was questioned by Eric as to which which one she was in favor of because we needed to submit it, and uh, and that was not you know. I, I would number one I think should read only shall the town of Johnson suspend its ATV ordinance until new regulations of ATV use in the town have been established by the select board. Period. So just like that and remove all this. Yeah, because, you know, uh, that would be the new regulation. The rest is kind of, uh, it. they're not established by the select board until unless it's properly warned, et cetera. Um, and uh, the new regulation, you know, 
is can address speed limits, et cetera, all that. Then I would leave in, I'd go back to the one that Kirsten had said she'd accept and say like, or alternatively, you know, I'd leave that all in and go to the one that uh, Kirsten had said she'd accept and say, and ask the attorney, or what about this? I okay. think Brian's already written over it. I, I can bring it back. Okay. Eric, this Mike. whole thing is totally irregular. Since when does the select board sit back and modify uh, people's petitions? This is absolutely ridiculous. Since when did we waive the requirement for signatures? Yeah, well, the majority of the board did, but I didn't. Well, it's the wishes of the board. I understand that, but I go on record to say I voted against it. Duly noted. I'll mess with that a little. But this is totally irregular, Mr. Chairman, because some people on this board are pro ATV and some are possibly anti ATV. So you're getting a prejudicial uh, product here as far as I'm concerned. What we're trying to do right now is establish a proper format. And it's not our job. And get the intent of the petitioner. Yeah. Uh, we did the same thing with the previous petition. Um, trying to accomplish the same thing with this one. Yeah, I made a mistake on that one and I regret it. So we wanna ask for these four. And These four, and if the first one isn't allowed, that's where we'll go for the alternative. Mr. Chairman, why don't we find out from the attorney whether we can make changes or not, and then it will put this all to bed real quick. We are if going we, to, if, Mike. We are going. I know, to. but what we're doing all of this work right now, and it could be all for nothing. And it could be if he tells us we can, we've done the work. Okay. And you could delete some of the rest of that properly warned. We have to warn things by law and voted on a special session, that would be due to, you know, when a petition is brought forward, all those are just things that wouldn't automatically happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. So I'm going to the attorney with the four questions taken directly from the petition with the, uh, what we think is the, the uh, prejudicial language removed. If those are inadvisable still, I'm looking at the uh, alternative question of just, Shall the town of Johnson suspend its ATV ordinance until new regulations of ATV use in the town have been established by the select board to address the following, which roads, regulations, and penalties. And a possible answer could be none of these are proper. You know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is the board as comfortable and happy as we can be? And we'll look for next Monday a, an opinion from our attorney. Okay. Okay. With no objection, I would suggest we move on, do the last two items that
Brian has, and then we'll come back around to board positions on any of the warning articles. And we can also look for public input during that time. I do have a little bit more on this one. Uh, besides the, oh, the, the ballot questions that we've got, we also have the merger question. The merger question and uh, a few new nonprofit appropriation requests. Okay, can you bring so them up? So the nonprofit appropriation requests is an increase for Home Health, Red Cross, the Clarina Howard Nichols Center, and then new requests for the Recovery Center and Salvation Farms. And these are gonna follow the same format we've used for all other nonprofit, so nonprofit appropriations. So they will not show up in our ballot. They're, if they are existing, they were zeroed out. If they're new, they don't appear anyway. Uh, and they'll appear on our ballot as individual ballot questions of whether we grant them their requested uh, appropriation or not. And the question of the merger is before the attorney Monday, uh, tomorrow, right? The question for the merger is, will be before the attorney. I have draft language on what that looks like. Uh, let me grab that real quick. And just so everyone knows, the question for the voters will be, do the voters want the uh, select board to enter into discussions with the trustees on a merger question? Uh, the question would still come back to the voters up or down on whether we merged or not. This would only uh, allow for the select board to enter into those discussions with the trustees after reviewing the report from the consultant that will be included in your town report. So the word, the draft wording I have for that ballot question is, shall the town of Johnson collaborate with the village of Johnson trustees to create a specific merger plan? Any board comments on that, particularly that article? Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Yeah, no problem with that. Okay. Uh, any public input on that article? Again, looking for wording uh, and phrasing rather than uh, merits. I don't like the word collaborate. You don't like the word what? Collaborate. <laughs> oh. What's your suggestion for a change? I think Enter. we need to study, we need to, you know, should, should the town and village study their respective and mutual interest in a possible merger? Or enter into discussions. Yeah. So you may want to reword that a little bit, Brian. Okay, I'll, I'll work on rephrasing, collaborate. The other, and I kind of hate to bring it up, but the other thing we might want to add to this uh, do we want to have a deadline for a report? No. Okay. All right. Okay. If there's no further. I don't have anything else for comments? ballot questions. Okay. Let's, let's move on quickly to the next two items. Uh, Regional Salt. Solid Waste District. We, we don't have a representative. Their annual meeting is coming up. Um, you know, I, I, I can volunteer to attend their annual meeting. I won't be a voting representative, but I'll at least be able to report on it. What's the board's pleasure? Board's blessing, I'll, I'll take that on unless we're willing to appoint somebody. You, you didn't get anybody? No, I don't have any requests yet. And Rosemary, you haven't seen a... No, I haven't seen a consent form yet. Yeah. You wanna do this until we do our appointments? We'll shake the tree again, see if anybody falls out. Yeah, I think so. 
Okay. Uh, there's really just one meeting between now and when after we do our appointments. Okay. Uh, but that's kind of the big one where we want to make sure that we do have somebody present. So I'll attend for that one. Okay. Thank you. And you've got the uh, county sheriff's uh, monthly report for December received by email. Okay. Any comments on that? If not, we'll circle back for the question of board positions on any of the warning articles that we are setting forward. Um, I'm not sure if there's a preferred order. Uh, the order we presented them, I guess, was the can cannabis opt-in question. Uh, does the board wish to take a position on that particular article? I'm against it. I um, it depends on what the question is. If it's if it's opt in, then no, I don't think the board should have a position on it. Okay, if, we can if, wait to make that determination. If you want to wait for the attorneys, take sure. But I do just want to make myself clear that um, if it's to create a committee to do what we said we would do in in the question that I think very much that that's very much in the town's interest to do. Because whether we opt in or not, whether the community ultimately decides to opt in or not, we're going to have to answer a lot of questions on what opt in actually means. And voters aren't going to be able to make an informed decision unless we have this sort of a committee. So that's my pitch. Okay, I would open it up to, unless any further board member comments, I'd open it up to the public. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing any public comments on this. Okay. So I guess the board will reserve its right to possibly taking a position on this next Monday night. If there's no further comments, we'll move on to the next article. Okay, the ATV uh, ordinance article. Is there a board pleasure to take a position on this article? I'm against any restriction on ATVs. Okay, do you wanna take a position tonight or do you wanna wait until after the attorney review? I don't need a attorney review. I don't think, uh, as you recall many years ago, this was quite a contentious battle and I'd hate to see the whole town go through it over again and reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, uh, Unfortunately, uh, some people have, you know, bad thoughts about a, a certain hobby that people do. Uh, there's always one or two people that probably, uh, you know, cause the problems, but the vast majority of them do not. You know, it's like, but where do you stop? You know, somebody might not like a sound of a snowmobile. You want to ban them? You know, it, it just, it's just ridiculous. Uh, Everybody has a right uh, to their own form of recreation. And if that's their recreation, then they have a right to do it. Okay, that was a long winded answer to a simple question of yes or no. Do you want to take a position? That's my position. Sure. Okay. That's my position. <laughs> I think it was a yes then. Um, I, I, well, I'm against any restriction on ATVs, that's my position. What, do you have a position on the article? Yeah, I think he does. I think we got our yeah. answer. Okay. <laughs> and I don't have a position and I don't believe that this select board should take a position. I think we should hear from the people. Okay, Doug, any thoughts to Kyle? It's hard for me to know because I, I see the young people driving these driving the ATVs. I have an ATV. Um, uh, I think that it's what, what it's time for is time for a, another, you know, I don't know about repealing this or suspending it. I think it's time for another uh, uh, look at what a, of ATV usage in our community. I, I think that uh, there are reasons to look at it. And I think that uh, maybe we could get uh, get some sort of consensus rather than all up or all down. 
so, but none of that is here. I think that can be done outside of this. So no position. Yeah. And Doug, I know why you say that because you're not going to be on the board in two months. Well, for years I thought we shouldn't raise it, you know. So that might be that might be you know putting a stone in the pile that, that you're right. Uh, but <laughs> the it's it's been coming to the surface, you know. Yeah. I did go a number of years ago to the meeting that was held at uh, in Johnson for now NVU, where they had uh, the you know they tried to get all the town representatives in. The uh, statewide ATV people were there. And they, they clearly, you know, what Ken had said about taking care of our roads is they are, they are out there on the fourth class roads, you know. This, this is also, uh, we can't do a thing about fourth class roads. I think that the state should give us jurisdiction over fourth class roads uh, to say yes or no on that. Uh, knowing that, that uh, they, they do, you know, to me, this requires a, a whole encyclopedic look at the thing because it's it's a tremendous recreation for people and it's a problem. Kyle? Yeah, I'm I'm more of the thought that I I think that this is something that we need to we need to hear from the people on and not and not state a position, personal position. Or a board position. Or I yeah I mean I have a I do have a personal position but I don't think it needs to be a board position. Okay. I've heard from all the board members, uh, Brian. Let's open it up to the public, and uh, this is their opportunity to to tell us some of the merits for or against the uh, article. Okay, so two right off the bat. Uh, Jen Burton, you had your hand up first, and then I'll call on Ken. I just want to thank the board um, for working through that, um, the wording and, and doing that work because I know Kirsten reached out for help with that and um, worked really hard on it. So thank you for working through that um, for her and for everyone else who is behind her. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. And Ken, you were up next. Okay, I'd like to also thank the board because I've dealt with you many times and you've all been very gracious and worked with the club, meaning Green Mountain ATV and VASA greatly. Um, I, I'm against it because we, we try to be good patrons with everybody. Uh, we try it. I've talked to Brian many times. I've talked to all you select board members many times. Um, Shane Spence could concur for us that they're in green up. Generally, we fill a wagon or two. And this year I sent him pictures of a truck and a wagon for the, the town's truck and the town's wagon, completely full of garbage on green up. Um, and these are from the class three and two roads, not class four roads, because they're clean. We don't trash the environment. Um, we help the town. We, we try to, you know, we... We took uh, Brian Krause down Cotton Hollow, where Doug and everybody could concur there was a great hydraulic problem. We volunteered to fix it with the approval of the town, took Brian back down there, showed him what we did. Everybody was very happy with how we were helped control an erosion. Uh, we don't want it because we know if we cause it, we don't get to go anywhere. Uh, each club has two members who have been certified by National Off-Highway Vehicle Association, spent uh, 48 hours training, going through erosion control, ground hardening to control erosion control, wetlands. We know when we're got a gracious landowner to help us get a trail out in their property, first thing we do is check the wetlands map, you know, so. We know all about that. We've done training just like VAST. VAST, I believe, does the same thing, and I think Bobby can concur. Um, we're not rookies. Last year made a lot of people mad. Everybody had to consider how mad we're all about how you guys waived the signatures and modified a petition after the deadline. It was a, there wasn't a dealer in New England 
that had an ATV for sale after the governor reduced the restrictions and let people out. Why? Because nobody was working, nobody did anything, nobody had anything to do, they couldn't go anywhere, so they all explored out and found out how great it was to be out and about in a motor vehicle with California emissions, radio tires, seat belts, no kids can drive unless they go through a safety training course, I believe just like VAST. So we cover a lot of ground. We try to work with everybody. Um, Brian Story and me and the select board, we figured out how we could adjust the speed limits on the town roads that they set with the ordinance to help mitigate issues. And unfortunately that happened too late in the season to help Christians issue. But at the same time, we tried to mitigate that by having the Hoag family, which is a gracious family, the Sullivans and Hoags, who live on the Hoag Road that she is talking about, who have zero complaints about us and let us on their land, which, I mean, there's three landowners in Johnson who allow us to go on their land. We have the money to make trails. We require six feet. We go through permitting if it has to. Um, I really, I just think the economic impact to Johnson would be horrendous. I think any one of you could go down and ask Jolly Store how much we brought to them last year in sales, gas, food, everything. Um, you could ask the Eden stores. You could ask Max in Morrisville. Um, it's expanding. Newport just opened up their beautiful town and city there to ATVs and. And I know you all saw the reports that there was no issues. It was great. They had, they got all kinds of money. Every town needs money. I just heard you talking about the budget for the new truck, you know? So I think we ought to really slow down the group and the, and most ATV people are all for revisiting stuff, but there's no way you should just want to pull the plug. Like they're asking after since 2006, you know, there's been no issues. Few, all right, take that back. No accidents, no deaths, few issues. And we've tried to address them. And I've been to the select board trying to address them. So I think, I think it's just a waste of the town's time because I went to the select board. They, they advised me to go to the town meeting last year. And I asked a question at town meeting and you all saw it was 100% approval, and I believe about 10 people spoke who don't even own ATVs, who have no clue about ATVs, and was thinking it was a great idea for the town, because if we don't bring money to the town, you guys just come to us to take more money to pay for the shit in the town. Sorry, excuse the language. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll stop now, but I think, I think I've... I think our club and the ATV community has shown the town of Johnson that we've been respectful. We've tried to, it's always a few bad eggs and that shouldn't ruin it for the greater population. And thank you all for listening to me ramble. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. I think Linda's got her hand up. Uh, yep. I got you, Linda. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I just have a question. Are ATVs are allowed on some roads? Are snowmobiles allowed on some of our roads as well? Yes. They are. I don't, I, I never see them on the road. So I just was curious. I didn't know. Is they it, go ahead, what? Are they typical just short distances between trail connections? So they would, the, so the ATVs would be kind of doing the same thing that the snowmobiles are doing on the same type of road, same section of the road? Uh, no, uh, snowmobiles, by and large, and Bobby's on here, she can correct me, but by and large, the snowmobiles go on private property or public lands. Uh, they, they try to avoid the roads because sometimes the roads are, you know, the snow melts on them. But there have been different roads at different locations throughout the community that are open to snowmobiles so they can get from one trail to another. Whereas the ATVs are uh, more on the road travel than uh, private property. Okay, just curious. 
Thank you, Linda. Uh, and Greg, I've got you up. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Not too bad. Sure. Hey, I got a couple things here. Uh, you know, I don't think these folks that are riding these four wheelers are going to be jogging in spandex in our town. And uh, it's not who they are. They don't, they're not real hikers or joggers or runners or all these things that some folks in town enjoy. Uh, myself, I like to take some walks too. But, you know, they, there are more people that work with their hands and uh, they're carpenters and they're plumbers and they're electricians and they're, they're motor heads or motor people. And uh, I just feel like we're being a little bit prejudiced towards that population here. Um, you know, that's what they like to do. It, and they should have the fair chance to do that. And uh, I just don't think that's, I don't think that's right. We need these people in our communities and they should be welcomed and, and uh, respected in our communities. They're trying their best to make it right with everybody. And, uh, you know, motorcycles are louder than four wheelers. You hear them downtown all the time. And I like people with motorcycles, but you know, you, you hear them in town, they make twice as much noise as a four wheeler does. So I don't think that's right. Um, and the other thing I wanted to comment on is, uh, if, with all due respect to all board members, um, the uh, rewriting of this petition, I can't even believe that's legal. Um, it may be, but uh, I'm, well, I tell you, if this is taped and uh, some lawyer gets their hands on it, I got a feeling that it's not going to go well. So, and that's nothing to do with any of you folks. You're trying to do your best. And I appreciate that, but uh, boy, it just seemed a little fuzzy to me there. So, but anyway, thanks. And thanks for all your service too. Thank you, Greg. If we have anyone else, Brian? Yep, uh, Bobby. So talking Linda Hill's questions, um, I wanna make sure that you're all clear that most of these organizations that play in more motor sports, we're all volunteers. We just go out in the woods and do this. We don't get paid. We host fundraisers. This is where we spend our weekends in the woods. All summer, all winter. We're not bothering anybody. And you guys all seem to enjoy the rail trail. That's because of the snowmobile community that that rail trail that you enjoy happened. We groom that trail. We raise money to buy fuel for that snow cat that makes that trail flat that all you people like to ski on. As far as motorized vehicles go, some of us, some of us ski, downhill ski, cross country ski, snowshoe, hike, we, and we ride. And we see all you people out there in those woods enjoying that, that space. And I honestly think that you're being prejudiced the same way Greg Tatro just brought up. When you're looking at restricting motorized vehicles in some of these places to some people who that's their only enjoyment because they are not mobile enough with their own body to be able to go out and hike. So I think you need to take that into consideration when you're making your decisions. Not just that, but as I said earlier, my cousin who had a spinal injury and spent months at Spalding in Boston that left him um, with limitations, he bought one of these rigs so he can get out and enjoy this community and give himself a little bit of independence again, which is something he'll probably never have again. So take that into consideration because it's important. We all do different things. Thank you, 
Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, Kim, I see your hand. I've got uh, Joey up first. Unmuted. Go ahead, Joey. Thank you. Um, I'm going to speak for the farmers in this one. Obviously, uh, four wheeling and snowmobiling and all that is recreational, but there's some other folks out in the world that need to use ATVs for uh, farming and for whatever other job that they might do. So, um, and that also, this point was also brought up by um, Hiram Hoag, who's on Hoag Road. So, just keep that in mind too. It's not just recreational. It is also to do some very important work. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Okay, Kim, uh, go ahead and unmute. So Bobby, I respect the snowmobilers and the club. I didn't like being yelled at. I felt like that was really not very, us and it felt very us and them. I would really like everyone to try to work together and use language that helps unite us and and help. Uh, I appreciated what you said. It's just how it came. To, it hit me. It hit me like I was your enemy. Um, and I and I know my husband has cut trees on the trail and we've tried to help out. Um, and I like to think of it as a multi-use. And I know Vass put a lot of money towards it, but as a community resource and as class four roads are a public entity and also a community resource, I feel like it, we should try to work together. And if residents are feeling like they need to sell their homes and leave as tax paying residents, I feel like it is an issue for the town to talk out and try and figure out how we can work um, with these snowmobile clubs that are great entities and that seem to be um, very respectful and caring about things how we can help this homeowner um, or this road or this land or this issue work through it and try and figure out are there are there is there special things that you could do as a club or um, with this area to help this issue just go away I feel I feel like everyone's capable of doing this I don't know yeah yeah I don't uh, yeah let's try and work together Thank you, Kim. Okay, then Kirsten and Bobby, I'll get back to you. What's our, um, it, it seems like we're not gonna get this question solved tonight. Um, our, how long later are we gonna take testimony of it? I know that we're gonna have many meetings in the future on this. Yeah. Uh, the only other item we have left that I'm aware of is whether the town or whether the board wants to take a position on the town village merger question. Other than this one here. Uh, or no, there was uh, something with uh, Martin Luther King that uh, Kyle wanted to bring up. So it, I guess that is a good point for the board. It is 10 o'clock right now. This is the, uh, the hour we usually look at uh, what we have for must-dos versus things we want to push off and not wanna, do tonight. You know, I, I don't want to cut people off, but I, I also feel like we could just be going all night back and forth on this. Okay. What if we just take the last three hands that are up and... That, that seems fair to me. Okay, so Brian, the last three hands that were up. Okay, so... We'll move on. Kirsten, Bobby, and then D. And then we'll wrap up. Okay, uh, go ahead, Kirsten. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you so much for your patience and um, listening to me. I just wanted to say that um, regarding accidents and deaths, um, there has been accidents and deaths. In fact, the amount of accidents in Vermont have tripled this year since 2019. And uh, so in two, 2020 in June, they had tripled since the following, the, the uh, previous year. And um, the issue is that they're not designed to be on the road. The tire design that makes them safe off-road makes them unsafe on the road. And um, another 
issue that I think is really important is that um, there's been so there's been so much increased ridership because um, many of our surrounding towns don't allow ATVs and so they end up coming to Johnson and we're just getting a so so when it's regarding the town noise ordinance um, you know it's the, the noise ordinance says that the uh, sounds such as grinding noises, loud, uh, loud noises that are very difficult to listen to should not be allowed. And with the increased ridership, I mean, I love the idea of your friend being able to ride ATVs. I would welcome him to drive past me. I, I would be happy to see him enjoying, but the problem is we're getting trailers bringing ATVs from all over the state and out of state to come to our town, which is um, the noise of, you know, 11 going by at a time is very different from one at a time. and. You know, so I really think that the, the issue is safety and the issue is noise and, um, and you know, other issues as well. So I, I just wanted to say that and thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you. All right, Bobby. Um, Kim, I'm just direct. It doesn't mean I don't like anybody. I just say what's on my mind. That's all. Don't take any offense to that. And I'm all about working together. Always have been. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, and D. Uh... Um, hi. Um, I want to thank the board for taking the time to discuss this really important issue. Um, my comment is going to be short. Um, I don't think it's a matter at all about not respecting ATV people. I, I don't think that's it at all. I think the biggest problem is the noise that they create in our environment. And I think if we could fix that, I think that would fix a lot of the problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dee. Um, I would just remind everybody, there's only 34 people on this call. Uh, if you are for strongly or, or against something, an article that's gonna be on the town warning, uh, you probably better do some outreach because uh, 34 is not the whole community. Uh, it's only a very small uh, fraction, but uh, we will have some informational meetings. There will be opportunities to speak more there. There may be more people that attend those, uh, but it's really up to you and the res you're responsible to get the message out if you are in favor or against a certain article. Okay, thank you. And the final article is, does the board want to take a position on the town village merger question? I don't know that we need to, but I would like to say that I'm against it. I don't think that this it's a good idea for the town to do this at this time. Kyle? Um, I, I am leaning in the other direction, actually. I do think that we should um, definitely continue to look into this more. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it needs to, I don't know if we need to take a board uh, position, but I, I personally want to continue moving forward. Doug, do you, do you think the board should take a position? I don't think so. Uh, I have my, I have a very strong personal opinion that uh, I would not consider merger with the village if the uh, uh, if the select board were, was responsible for the utilities, because everything that we do now, which overwhelms us, would be completely taken over by that. So, I uh, the utilities presence is is a big problem to me on responsibility for that. 
So maybe they can talk about the issues and uh, deferred maintenance and all, all things like that. Certainly it could be explored, um, but I think, you know, just on a capacity level, I think that we don't have the ability to handle what they're doing. Okay, thank you, Doug. Mike, don't be shy. Try to evolve a <laughs> an opinion. I, I want to preface this too. I mean, I, I'm hard of hearing, and so I speak loudly. And I was also a Marine, and I guess I still am a Marine, and they taught us force and volume. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put that right out there. So I may speak loud, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm getting ugly with anybody. So I want to get that out there tonight because of the sensitivities that we do have in our, in our time that we live in. Uh, but we had decided early on that the board, as I recall, was not going to have a position. That's why we tried to uh, back away from this and tried to uh, have an outside entity come in and do this evaluation. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that we can't have an opinion individually as board members. And uh, my opinion is that we should not merge. Uh, a local accountant told me, uh, who used to be a trustee, that if we have a merge, we better, the town had better come up with about a minimum of $200,000 right out the bat. Uh, we wouldn't have the certain luxuries that the village has as far as their the way that they uh, divvy their uh, expenses out. And I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so, uh, and besides to try to maintain the water, the sewer, the electricity, the fire department, uh, it, it's just, uh, I think it would be overwhelming. Uh, you see what time it is now for one select board meeting. Can you imagine if we had to be responsible for every single thing that the village takes care of now. So good luck finding somebody to be on the select board if the, the merge does take place. Really, it's, uh, it will be insurmountable. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that's, I've heard from every board member, it sounds like a uh, board will not take a position on this. Let, let's hear from you, Eric. I would not be supportive of a merger at this time. I, okay. I think there's, uh, there's too many unanswered questions in the village. Um, I think right now they've got, they're uh, dysfunctional in a sense because of their board membership. I don't think they could uh, take on the negotiations of a merger. And I just wouldn't, I don't think it's wise for the community, for the town. Uh, I guess I would open it up to the public if anybody wants to voice an opinion on that particular article. And are we seeing anyone, Brian? Uh, Kirsten's got her hand up. Uh, okay, I'm going to unmute you, Kirsten. Is this uh, about the ATV question or is this about the, the merger question? Uh, and it looks like you're still muted. I didn't mean to have my hand up. Sorry about that. That's all right. Okay, you're all set. I think Scott would like to speak too. Okay. All right, go ahead, Scott. Hey, everybody. So um, my apologies. I haven't been listening in as probably as well as I should have. So for the town village merger potential, for the topic, I'm, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around this. You're just getting the opinion of the select board if whether they would be in favor of doing such, or is this just getting an agenda item out on the town meeting agenda for a vote? There's an article in our warning for town meeting on uh, will the do the, shall the voters authorize the select board to enter into discussions with the trustees on a town village merger question? The question before the board was, 
were we going to take a position on that article going into town meeting, um, either for or against it? And there was not anyone on the board who felt that the board as a whole should take a position. And then we just shared individually what we were, would or, or did not support for the article. Okay. So uh, two comments on that, if I may. And the first one is um, our old village chair was called out for having an opinion on several occasions on this topic. Um, and he was called out for it. So I'm trying to figure out how we go from a village trustee being called out for his opinion on whether this would work or not and how we fall into having the same discussion um, with the select board. That's my first question. And I may be completely off on that, but it's just sort of how I'm, I'm reading it. And the other one is, um, getting this thing called the question, uh, Eric and I had a conversation and I was hoping, and I, I still think it's very possible, not to cloud the water of the village residents and the town residents and having um, a, uh, a, a vote that's worded exactly the same for the town residents and for the village residents. So there is no bias or, or you know, wordsmithing um, to, to point voters in a different direction, if that makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's up to the village residents, it's up to the town residents. We should guide that question to vote um, to them without any kind of bias whether we think it's valid or not. Um, I believe during town meeting and village meeting, it would be the best time for the elected chairs to speak their piece on whether they agree with it or not. But, you know, it, it's sort of gray to me now, but two, three years ago when we were discussing this and got it pushed through, um, we were gonna try to remain as neutral as possible. Um, both chairs um, who are gonna be involved in the procedure and, and that's why we went with a third party contractor so there wouldn't be any bias um, and it would be a neutral party. I, I, I know it's a little wordy, uh, I'm just trying to figure this out but those are my comments and just for the select board, um, I'm, st I'm still shooting for the same language, so it's not biased in either direction from both boards to all the residents of this community. Thank you, Scott. Um, we, we do have language drafted up. We're gonna run it through our attorney. We will officially adopt it next Monday night. But uh, Brian, could you read the language that- Yeah, uh, it would be- stopped? Yeah, I think the only thing that would switch in my opinion, the only thing that would switch is the order of, you know, ours that says, uh, shall the town of Johnson Select Board collaborate with the village of Johnson trustees to create a specific merger plan? I got the feedback that we want to change the word collaborate. Um, but yeah, I think the only difference between what the town and the village had before the question was, would be, shall the blank of Johnson work with the Blank of Johnson. Okay. Um, and I don't think I, that's a leading question to the voters, you know, that we're trying to lead them one way or the other. I think it's a very proper uh, article. Um, the question that was before the board was, that's the article that's gonna go before the voters. Does the board wanna take a position on that article like any other article in our warning? Uh, the select board supports this article and would encourage voters to vote for it, or we do not support it and would encourage voters not to. And we're not going to take any position as a board. Individuals have a position. But individually as a board, you can, because I, I have the feeling this may sneak up on me as the new chair or the trustees. If the trustees want to speak their piece, whether they're in favor or not in favor of a merger, um, again, I think that sort of clouds the water a little bit and it doesn't give 
um, a neutral stance for the town and village residents to make up their own mind. Um, I may be wrong on that. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this. Um, don't mean to dump my angst on you guys, but um, just trying to figure it out on how the village trustees now can speak their piece or if we should sort of sidestep it. I would suggest, you know, using this similar format as we did, uh, ask your board, does the board want to take a position on that article when you put it before your voters? Your board may decide that they do want to take a position either for or against uh, the article. Okay, yeah, um, I, just want, I, think, I just want to make sure we're doing everything pretty much on par for what the select board is doing because it affects everybody. Yeah, well, you should because we're usually right. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be said, Eric. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think the point of neut about neutrality was to have a, a neutral and fair process for for the report and for having a third party that's neutral and objective and um, that he gives advice to us back that's not prejudiced in one sense or another, but is objective. Um, now that that report is out or will be, it will be out shortly. Um, I think that it's actually fair and, and really reasonable for the public to look to the trustees and select board members as individual, current and former, to say, what's your opinion on this? You know, you've, you've been in the trenches of these issues uh, deeper than, than most people. Um, what do you think about this report? And so I think I would, I don't want to hold my tongue and say, well, I'm going to be neutral. You know, don't, don't listen to my, my experience on it. Um, I'll, I think I sh we should be able to tell them what we think as individuals with experience. And then you'll get crucified. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> but you know. It goes with the territory. It's why you're paid the big bucks. Okay. Uh, Sophia, did you have your hand up? No, okay. Was there any other public comment on that particular article? No, that was it. And I don't, I would not uh, anticipate the board wants to take a position on any of the other articles, uh, the nonprofits, uh, et cetera. We never have in the past. If there's no further business on that item, I would say we can move on to the Martin Luther King discussion that Kyle wanted to have. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, it's not really a discussion. It's just some reflections on this day that I wanted to share with uh, okay. the board and the public. Um, so seeing as today is the 35th national celebration of the life and legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, I feel it's important to take a moment to reflect on his teachings and to remember that as elected officials in, position, in positions of local power, we have a real responsibility and obligation to uphold democracy and justice at all times, even if, and especially if it feels uncomfortable. Um, and one significant way that we can do this is keeping our BIPOC community and our most vulnerable populations in the forefront of our mind when taking votes, writing policies and ordinances by asking ourselves, who will this benefit? Who will this lift up? Who will this shut down? Does this policy or ordinance establish social and racial justice now in 10 years from now? Um, so as I was doing my own reflecting, reflecting today on how I can be a better ally and upholder of social equity, I read these words by Dr. King's daughter that struck a deep chord. And she said, instead of using my father to criticize the Black Lives Matter movement, use his words and teachings to enact legislation, establish policies and engage and practices that reflect Black Lives Mattering. Because as Martin Luther King said, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. Um, and I just wanna conclude by reading our own town's anti-racism statement that is a call to action to work and to continue to work to dismantle systemic racism in our own community. And that reads as follows. 
The Johnson Select Board stands with our town and village's inclusivity statement in the fight against systemic racism, white supremacy, and the historic oppression of the Black community. We believe that Black Lives Matter remain fully committed to being proactive as leaders and standing up to and publicly rejecting any racism and bigotry in our community. We're committed to listening and learning from our Black, Brown, Indigenous people and concerned citizens. We're committed to working with the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department and our legislators to deconstruct all policies and laws that create and amplify racism and poverty in our community. We are committed to continuing to fund and organize educational programming on racial justice and racial bias for all Johnson residents in the surrounding communities. We reject racism, bigotry, discrimination, hatred, and violence in all its forms. And that's it. Thank you, Kyle. Has anyone else got anything further they would like to speak to tonight? If not, I see it as a first. Okay. Thank you all for staying, show us adjourned at whatever the time is, 1021. Mm -hmm.